Megan Fox. Yeah, Megan Fox has the story. Megan Fox. Megan Fox. Megan Fox writes at PJ Media. Steve Tucker. Damn it. Man. <laughs> oh, damn it. I cried for two days. <laughs> Megan, thank you very much for that. So, um, I can, I can explain the bed thing. <laughs> if you don't show up and vote, up your ass. I don't care if you're in the hospital. <laughs> Crawl to the state. Crawl there. It's like Jesus going to the temple. He's like, I got a whip. Get out. Get, Get out. out. The lovely and wonderful Megan Fox. Not that hey. one. Not that one. <laughs> Not the weird one that drinks blood and has toe thumb. Megan Fox. Megan. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like get, I'm sorry. She's the devil. Megan. Megan Fox. Megan. Megan. Megan Fox. I've been very nice to you, although I could probably maybe not be based on the way you have treated me, but I wouldn't do that. You've never met a like me. You want to tangle? You want to go? Holy, holy sh- too much cussing on this. I guess we didn't bleep it, so we got to turn it off. But I just, it just, it's. It... You pissed off the wrong woman. Oh my God! I have been a soup when Megan Fox runs wild on you, brother. She's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Not for publication. <laughs> the story. I'm Megan. 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 Megan Fox. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> And welcome back to another episode of Megan Fox Investigates. It's me, your favorite medium smart journalist. I am here to investigate a news story. I am not happy about the topic, but I am happy to see you all back here on this beautiful Monday morning. Uh, I know how you all feel about being up on a Monday morning and back at work and everything else, but at least I'm here for you. And we have some serious news to talk about today. You guys know that on this channel, I have been covering medical kidnappings specifically. It all started, at least it started on this channel with the Maya Kowalski case, although I've been covering these things for 20 years. But the Maya Kowalski case really brought it to the forefront. And since then, people have been contacting me left and right about medical kidnappings going on, especially in the state of Georgia. I named this stream The Devil Went Down to Georgia because the devil for real is in Georgia, like kidnapping kids. I don't know what's going on, but this will be the second case that we talk about in uh, in Georgia with these medical kidnappings. And yes, I'm wearing my Vader shirt. You know, I feel especially vengeful when I have my Vader shirt on. So I have a very special guest for you. I have two very special guests for you today. Coming to the program is Ryan Ralston. He is from You Are The Power. Uh, he is a director, a Georgia State director from You Are The Power. He works with Spike Cohen. Ryan, thank you so much for being here. Megan, thank you so much for having me. And thank you so much for drawing attention to the causes that we're championing here in Georgia. You're, you're it's fan, you're so fantastic. important. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, you know, the the reviews are mixed on me. You know, you're going to either love me or hate me. I'm glad to hear that you are the power has decided not to hate me because uh, I am here for to help out. And also another advocate in the fight against medical kidnappings. You know him. You love him. You know him as Dr. Goodhair. He's here with us today, Dr. Joe Corcoran. Your hair is looking fantastic, sir. Fantastic. Uh, 
Megan, I, I put in the extra effort for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know how I feel about we could talk about hair all day long. But today <laughs> we're going to talk about we are going to talk about the Tim's family. And also we have uh, updates. Why don't we start, Ryan, with the update in the Hernandez case? My my audience is pretty caught up on the Hernandez case. And those of you who aren't in the description of this video is my reporting on the Hernandez case. I linked it at pjmedia.com. So if you need to get caught up, that's where you do it. But Ryan, where are we at with the Hernandez family? Sure. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Megan. So uh, just a real quick recap. Um, the last time that, that we were able to provide updates to you was that, you know, <clears throat> the judge ordered reunification of the Hernandez family and medical testing of the babies. And so that's progressing nicely. And so the, the, the next thing that we're working on, the next evolution is this, is we're focusing in on the criminal matters, because as you know, um, Matt and Tucky are, are facing decades in prison for a crime that, that did not occur. And so for the past year, uh, they've been able to unable to live in the same house. They've been able to function as a husband and wife. They're unable to communicate with, with, with another electronically, FaceTime, text messages, phone calls. And so uh, the defense the defense attorneys have filed a motion to uh, modify the bond conditions. And so we're going to have a hearing uh, this Thursday morning uh, in Forsyth County Superior Court. And so we're going to petition the judge. The attorneys are petitioning the judge to allow Matt and Tucky to move back into the same house and to, to once again function as a husband and wife. And so that's where we're at right now. Um, and as you know, we're not going to stop. We're not going to relent until this family has reunited. Now, can you tell me, Ryan, about You Are the Power? I have just come across you guys when the Hernandez case broke, and I was not aware of your organization until that case. And I just want to give you a compliment and say I have never, ever seen um, another organization be as effective as you have been. And I just want to know a little bit about your organization. How did you get started? And, and why do you think that what you do is effective versus other? I mean, I've seen other groups try to come together and make a difference. And I've just never seen anybody do it as well as, as you have. Sure. So for, for, for your audience members who are not familiar with you are the power we're founded by Spike Cohen. So we're a nonprofit organization, 501 C3, and we do have a C4 component, but I've worked specifically with a C3 component. Um, and so our mission is to help individuals, uh, families, and other organizations who have been adversely impacted or who have their lives adversely impacted by an overreaching government. And so we do that through um, through human respect. Our ultimate goal is to restore that human respect um, where the government has taken that away from the individual, where the government is trampling on the, the right of the individual. And so our mission, our focus is on community. It's focused on human respect and it's focused on love. And so we're able to achieve success through a community. We're a network. We're um, in all 50 states. We're around we're around the, the world, actually. And so this network comes together and we do uh, social media campaigns, emailing campaigns, and we try to have positive, engage in positive conversation with these elected officials who are really and truly trampling on the rights of, of, of individuals, specifically here in Georgia, because that's, that's where I work and that's where I live. You know, this is so important, um, what you're doing. It's so important. And I just, I just am so glad that you're doing it. And I have been thrilled to have somebody else in the fight, like helping, putting together information on who we can call and what we can do. Um, and we've done three or four action streams on this channel just for the Hernandez family. And we may have to do the same thing for the Tim's family. So I'm not real familiar with the Tim's family situation. Why don't you fill us in on what is going on with the Tims? And I will try and bring up um, photographs here. I have it here somewhere, but you go ahead. Okay, no problem. So uh, Brady and Carrie Tims, they live in, in Gordon County, Georgia, which is about an hour and a half north of Atlanta. Um, Brady, and Karen, uh, Brady and Carrie are parents to a beautiful uh, two-year-old baby boy named Jameson. Jameson was experiencing health issues as early as six weeks old. Um, Brady and Carrie rushed him to the hospital, rushed him to the pediatrician, uh, e pediatrician each and every time. Um, they took him to a hospital in uh, in Tennessee, and then those doctors in Tennessee uh, weren't weren't able to diagnose necessarily diagnose what was going on with um, with Jameson. Took him back to the pediatrician. Pediatrician recommend that um, they take the baby to Children's Healthcare of Atlanta or CHOA. Um, and that's really where the nightmare started. 
honestly, um, because they had interaction with Dr. Verena Brown. And she I was involved in the Hernandez case also. Yeah. So these child abuse uh, pediatricians specifically at CHOA are really been the catalyst for these nightmares for all the families that were helping here in Georgia. And so when they were there, uh, they did an x-ray of Jameson and they noticed that uh, the baby had some rib fractures that were in various stages of healing. Um, the child abuse uh, physician or pediatrician uh, diagnosed uh, Jameson as having been abused, which is absolutely furthest from the truth. Um, DFACS was called in, which is our Child Protective Services Division here in Georgia, DFACS, the Division of Family and Children's Services, were called in and they, they immediately seized Jameson. They literally took a newborn baby out of the arms of the mother while she was feeding the baby, breastfeeding the baby, ripped her, ripped the baby from uh, Carrie's arms, and they escorted uh, Brady and Carrie out of the hospital. Mm. Um, they were this is Verena Brown, by the way. Verena Brown is one of the child abuse pediatricians. She has been um, there have been other complaints about her. There was a website a while back I used to follow. I don't think it's being run anymore, but it was called Medical Kidnap. And Verena Brown is no stranger to medical kidnap accusations. And I think she even may have been sued. I need to look that up. But this is someone that is were, is on the radar. And then we've got the other one whose name is Stephen Mesner. Now, Dr. Mesner, he was involved in the Hernandez case too. He was, yeah. And Dr. Mesner was also involved in, in, the, in the Tim's case as well because he was reviewing the same records and was drawing the same um, incorrect conclusions as, as Dr. Brown. Oh so without their baby, um, without a support network, um, Brady and Carrie had to petition a, a, a juvenile court judge in, in Gordon County to for proper medical testing of baby Jamison. So um, Brady and Carrie wanted to take uh, baby Jamison to a, a children's hospital in Boston. And so the judge relented and said, yes, you can you can take the baby up to Boston for testing. However, DFAX has to accompany you while you are there, which obviously Brady and Carrie had nothing to hide. So they agreed to it while they were at, at Boston Children's Hospital. Um, Dr. Hollick diagnosed both mother with EDS, uh, Ehlers, Ehlers Danlos syndrome and the baby with EDS, which not only explained the 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 symptoms that Jameson was presenting at six weeks old, but lawfully explained some of the, some of the issues or some of the complications that Carrie experienced during pregnancy. And so, I mean, honestly, Megan, they thought they, they're, they're going to get their baby back. Like they have a doctor say, no, this is a medical diagnosis. This is not abuse. Um, so they fly back to Georgia fully expecting. And DFAX was in the room. DFAX was in the room. I mean, they, they were, were there. They, they witnessed yeah. this. Yes. And so when they get back to, when they get back to Georgia, they're fully expecting to have their family reunited, they expect to be vindicated. Um, and then DFAX digs their heels in deeper and says, well, we're not saying that the baby doesn't have EDS, but what we're saying is you you abuse your baby, you know, what? You physically. Yeah, they are doubling down. So in order to protect um, baby Jamison from being put in the state's foster care system, uh, Brady and Carrie actually uh, sign over a temporary legal guardianship to, to Brady's mother in order to to prevent the baby from further harm. And so two weeks, I'm sorry, two years later, Megan, two years, um, Brady and Carrie have been without their baby. Um, they're that unable is to live. Not only that, Megan, but it's been two years and up until March 5th, they had not been indicted, right? They have mm -hmm. been having these felony charges held over their head as some type of uh, punishment or retribution for speaking out against defects. And so we started so wait, our let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. So, yeah, so yeah. the the state filed charges against them for child abuse. Yes. But never indicted them. What's the difference here? How do we how, so, how do we make the how do we explain that exactly? Yeah. So law enforcement, um, because a child abuse pediatrician is a mandated reporter here in Georgia. So they have to notify um, defects of a possible child abuse and defects in turn notifies local law enforcement. So local law enforcement, in this case, was the Calhoun Police Department, um, was notified that uh, Brady and Carrie uh, were under investigation at CHOA for potential child abuse. And so, again, uh, law enforcement, just like DFACS, did not do their due diligence. They did not properly investigate this. And law enforcement, as well as DFACS, relied solely on the medical opinion of Dr. Verena Brown that this child had, had been abused. So what does 
what is what happens with Brady and Carrie? They get their child seized, and law enforcement swears out arrest warrants, felony arrest warrants, um, for cruelty to children and aggravated battery. And so now Brady and Carrie are facing decades in prison for a crime that never occurred. Law enforcement did not properly investigate this. And so for two years, they were they had not been indicted on these charges. They were simply arrested and they had been bought, they were bonded out and under strict bond conditions. And so on March the 5th, after two plus years, the acting district attorney in Gordon County, Earl Newton, decides that he's going to indict. This month? Yes. After yeah. Spike picked up the story? Yes. And after yes. people started calling yes. the district attorney saying, why hasn't there been an indictment in two years? And haven't they already gone beyond speedy trial? Because they were yes. arrested two years yeah. ago. They Correct. can't now indict two years later. They've already completely violated their constitutional right to a speedy trial, haven't they? They have. And so in Georgia, you have you have four years to indict on a felony. And so it had been oh over God. two years. Oh. Yes. Yeah. So they have four been four years, four years. Who are writing these laws? This is and you guys wonder why I'm like, of course, Fannie Willis is from Georgia. Of course she is. And like, oh, my God. Yeah, there's so much corruption happening in Georgia. It's a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare. Imagine, if you will. Uh, loving parents, you know, taking a sick baby to the hospital, trying to get answers, what's going on. And then the worst of the worst nightmare uh, uh, comes true when doctors actually accuse you of abusing your own flesh and blood. And not only that, law enforcement arrests you and you face decades in prison, not not only uh, for a crime that that didn't occur, but these parents are factually innocent, Megan. They have done no wrong. They have caused no harm to their baby whatsoever. And the, the opposite has occurred. They've been trying to seek answers for what's happened to their child since he was six weeks old. And then the state, Georgia, the acting district attorney, Earl Newton, um, does not do his due diligence. The law enforcement officials at the Calhoun Police Department, Sergeant Faulkner, um, who has bounced around from law enforcement agency to law enforcement agency in Georgia, does not do his due diligence, does not properly investigate these claims. They're relying on the sole opinion of one child abuse pediatrician who has a um, questionable background, if you will, Megan, a questionable background. Mm -hmm. And this is acceptable practice. This is what um, defects, this is what prosecutors, this is what Georgia accepts as um, proper uh, uh, a proper application of, of, of our judicial system here in Georgia. This is what they want to spend taxpayer money on, taxpayer dollars on. Um, and they are absolutely fracturing innocent families, factually innocent mm. families, Megan, are being fractured because no one um, wants to listen. No, no, no elected official. I mean, we've emailed the governor, Governor Brian Kemp. We've emailed local state officials. We've, we've emailed everyone who would potentially could listen and, and help this family. And they have, these emails have all gone unanswered. No one wants to return our phone calls. Um, it's, it's sad, Megan, when you can't even get a response from, from Georgia governor, Brian Kemp, you can't get anyone from his wow. office to respond to us. You can't get a response from defects. You can't get a response from children's health care of Atlanta. We're trying to point out that factually innocent families are being prosecuted, being arrested, facing decades, sometimes centuries in prison, Megan, for crimes that didn't occur. And no one wants to listen to us. Absolutely no one in a position of authority wants to hear what we have to say. Have you tried reaching out to Senator Ossoff, who is supposed to be investigating defects? So we have, Megan, and, and I want to give credit where credit's due because uh, Sen Senator Ossoff's office has, has been responsive to us. Okay, right. they, they really have. Um, we I gotta were, say, I, I don't. I, I everybody who knows me knows I hate both parties, but I'm particularly hostile towards Democrats. But Senator Ossoff has been one of the most responsive uh, senators that I've ever dealt with as far as this kind of stuff, and he does seem to be concerned about defects and the corruption going on there. Yeah, and so he, I he highly is. encourage people to keep on contacting Senator Ossoff's office about this stuff. It is, Megan. And one, and one of the things that really is troubling for me is um, Governor Brian Kemp's wife, uh, Marty Kemp, our first lady here in Georgia. She has ran on a platform where she's really championed this while she's been in office to combat child trafficking, to combat child abuse. And yet sh she has been silent. Mm. Um, both the governor and Marty Kemp have remained silent on these issues when uh, 
Brian Kemp's uh, political appointee, Candace Broach, who is the, the director of DFACS, a political appointee, um, they're charged with protecting these families, Megan. They're charged with protecting these children. Is she his children. appointee? Did he appoint her? He appointed her. Yep. He, I know her name. She's that one who showed up at Osof's hearing and she was extremely, what's the word I want to use? Um, well, she wasn't transparent. We'll put it no, that way. No, yeah. She she's a political appointee. Governor Brian Kemp appointed her. Interesting. Um, and and the the thing is, Megan, and, and maybe your your listeners know about this, but um when Brian Kemp was a Secretary of State here in Georgia, uh Candace Brochi worked for him. She was actually an attorney in the elections division here in Georgia. And then when he got oh. elected governor, yeah. So now, okay. now you see the connection. Yeah, so. yeah, now I got it. I got it. It doesn't surprise me. Listen, all these people are they're in it for themselves and what they can get. That the point is we have to make it uncomfortable for him. We have to make it as uncomfortable for him as possible so that he has to comment. We're definitely gonna have to do an action stream, folks. Yeah. You hearing me, we're gonna have to call the yeah. governor's office. We're gonna spend a day swamping his office with calls, letters, faxes, um, nicely, civilly, but we're going to make sure that we do that because this is outrageous. And Governor Kemp needs to respond. Um, Ryan, how many, how, who have you tried to contact over there? Are you, are you going to his media person? Are you going to his press secretary? Who are you going to? We're going to both, Megan. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you how, how um, the governor likes to hide behind uh, bureaucracy. We mm -hmm. can't even get his email address. We can't even get his chief of staff's email address. I had to file an open records request huh? to get the chief of staff's email address and to no get the way. governor's email. Yeah, it's, I mean, they are hiding behind did layer. You, did layer. you get it? Um, I haven't got the response yet. Um, they have 72 hours to respond to me. So we're hoping that, to get that because, you know, he needs to hear from us directly, Megan. We've sent hundreds, if not thousands of emails to Governor Kemp's office because through the contact us page, right? Because you don't get a, to send a, a, an email to a human being down there in the governor's office. You have to fight. And, and what's so sad, Megan, is the taxpayers pay for these email addresses, right? Yeah, no, those should not be closed off. In fact, I think it's illegal to not publish their um, email addresses, to tell you the truth. I think that that's actually not the law. You know, it, it might be because the taxpayers, we're funding those email addresses, and yet we have to file an open records request to get an email address so we can communicate with our own that's governor. Absurd. That's absurd. To communicate absurd. with our own governor. It's it's absolutely That's ridiculous. absurd. I've never heard of anything so dumb. But you know what? The last time we went looking for Governor Kemp's information, I had a very hard time. And I finally found an email, but it was listed on his on a different website than this one. And it wasn't his email. It was like some aide in his office or whatever. But yeah, yeah. that's a, oh my gosh. Joe, Dr. Joe, how are you <laughs> feeling so far about this oh story God. that you are hearing? I can't breathe. It's unbelievable. I mean, you know, the uh, uh, you were the first one to uh, raise my awareness about the Hernandez family and everything that the state of Georgia and DFACS has, has put them through. Um, the the Tims and the Sullivans just came to my attention in the last week through the work of You Are the Power and uh, uh, and Ryan and Spike. Um, it's it's just. It's stunning. The, you know, it, it's the same thing that I that I talked about with Maya's situation at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital, and it just seems like folks who are tasked with protecting children lose the forest for the trees, and and kind of you know the idea of non reunification should be such an option of last resort. And yet it's just a bureaucratic answer to a to a difficult situation that's far too easily. Um, I'm glad you brought accessed. up Maya. I'm glad you brought up Maya. It gives me a, a reason to show my memes uh, from the Kowalski <laughs> trial. Uh, this was one of my favorite ones. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's really sick. It's a yeah. sickness. It's like really bad. Uh, by the way, those of you who remember, this was one of my favorite <laughs> thumbnails of Dr. Joe Corcoran on the stand, just blowing it up in the Kowalski case. This is what we, <laughs> thank you, Joe. This is what we need though. Like in Ryan, is there, Tell me, is there 
are there plans for these families? Have they been hooked up with civil rights attorneys, with attorneys who are going, who are planning epic lawsuits when this is finished? Because this is what we need. We need people on the stand. We need answers. We need people under oath being ordered to to tell us what the hell they did here and why. Yeah, we. Um, so at You Are the Power, we approach this holistically, Megan. So we're not just here to, to raise awareness or draw attention to what's going on with these families. We're here to love and support them from, from step one all the way to reunification. So, you know, we're able to provide um, counseling services. Uh, we have a network of counselors. We're also able to provide um, through a network of attorneys who work either pro bono or they take a, a reduction in their fees to help these families. So there are civil attorneys that are involved in these cases, not, not just like with the Hernandez case and, so they're going to be working with the Tim's case as well. And then the Sullivan case down, down in South Georgia. And Dr. Joe, I just wanted to point out, like in Georgia, our reunification rate is one of the lowest in the nation. We're at about 30%. I think mm-hmm. the national average is pushing 50%. There are some cases, Dr. Joe, and there are some counties, uh, Dr. Joe and Megan, in Georgia where the reunification rate is 10 to 11%. It is oh that God. low. And And the Supreme Court has said they have ruled that parental termination is akin to the death penalty for parents. And so because of that, parental termination should be the utmost seriousness and the highest bar that the highest burden of proof should apply. And yet that's not what we're seeing. No, it's it's lower in Georgia because these cases are held in, in juvenile court where the burden of proof is the preponderance of evidence. It's not even oh, proof beyond reasonable doubt. It's so awful. and like, and the access to information about what happens in those courtrooms is so much harder to come by oh, yeah, it's completely than in a sealed. civil or criminal trial for adults. It is. Yeah, it's completely sealed. You know, and when you do get it, like sometimes things end up in my inbox. I have to make the choice sometimes to not go forward with it because if i do then they will retaliate against the parents for for because i got information that is you know sealed or whatever right um and that is so it's such a hard choice for me there are times where i am just like if the public could only see this, you know, maybe right. something would change. But then again, I've seen the retaliation against these families too. And I can't, it's a really tough thing. It's so tough. We've got to get, now these parents are almost a little bit, I don't want to say lucky, but they're a little fortunate in that they were charged criminally because they will get the highest burden of poop proof in those cases. You're absolutely right. But at the same time, there's this juvenile action going on, too, which is different than the the criminal. And so they still manage to keep it separate. And the juvenile case is the low burden of proof. Right. So it's a very complicated thing. And that's where the stakes are the highest, in my opinion, Uh, as as a father, the stakes are the highest in juvenile court because you have defects and you have these child abuse pediatricians who are trying to seize children from factually innocent parents. And so I cannot um, imagine, number one, bringing my child to the doctor and having a doctor accuse me of abuse, and then having defects follow through and say, we want to terminate your parental rights. We want to take your children, put them in foster care, adopt them out, and you're not you're, you're not going to have any contact with your children for the rest of, for the rest of their lives. Um, and, and Megan, not only that, but if you speak out against defects, if you speak out against defects, their de facto position is adversarial, it's punitive, it's antagonistic. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to come after you with everything they have for trying to speak truth to power. And it frightens some of these parents. It absolutely scares them to death because the Look state what has their Jennifer babies. Williams. Look what happened to Jennifer yeah. Williams. They Jennifer took Johnson. her foster respite home away from her. Yep. They, for speaking they, out. For speaking out against, yeah. you know, they tell you if you see something, say something. And here she goes and she does exactly what they tell her to do. And and they take her respite care home away from her for speaking out on behalf of the Hernandez family. She is such a hero to me. I have never met anybody else like a, a foster parent who wanted to get involved in one of these things where they saw something wrong happening and they stuck up for the parents. I've never seen this happen. And I just admire her and her husband so much. She has become like an advocate for all these other families too. She's always keeping me in the loop and sending me emails about them. And I know that she's just found, you know, something. Oh, that, it reminds me, Ryan, if you said that, that you're the power is in um, all every state, how do 
my audience, how do they get involved with you? Because your organization, if you guys, if you want to get involved and help, please volunteer with the You Are the yes. Power organization. Yes. And how do they do it, Ryan? Sure. So if you go to uh, youarethepower.net and then you can join as a member, it's free membership. If you want to pay for membership, you're more than welcome to do that. But if you just want to join and, and start receiving our newsletters, you want to understand what we're all about in, in, in other states, that's the best place to go, youarethepower.net. And speaking of Jonathan and Jennifer Williams, and I, I don't want to say this, um, uh, they they work with us at You Are The Power here in Georgia, but we call them our tiger team. So you have Jonathan and Jennifer, and then you have um, Jennifer's sister, Mandy. So they're our tiger team. Not only do they help these families in, in Georgia, but they have so graciously volunteered their time. They're helping families in all 50 states, Megan. They all are amazing. I, they're amazing. I have spoken to Jennifer multiple times and this woman yep. has a heart for these kids. And I just am so thrilled to have met her and to have to watch what she's done. And anyone, any one of you can become another Jennifer, another, yep. any one of you can do this. Uh, and I'm just, I don't usually recommend organizations, but I've watched you guys. I've watched what you've done. And I think that you are amazing. And I want, if I can help you in New York, I will help you in New York. I can, whatever I can do, yep. because I think that this is one of the first times I've ever seen an organization like this get some traction and actually get some responses. Yep. Um, so I'm just thrilled yep. about it. And I think you guys should all go and sign up and become volunteers for them because I'm sure they could use the work, I, the help, um, no matter what your, your strengths are, I'm sure they can use it. I will put the link in the chat for you guys. Go sign up. Okay. And I'm also, we are on Rumble and we are on locals, meganfox.locals.com. Make sure that you guys are following me there because if you don't, you won't get notifications because YouTube is asshole and they always do that to me and they don't give you guys my notifications when I'm going live. So make sure that you're following me over at meganfox.locals.com. It's free to follow me there. Um, but you do have to download the app and sign up for notifications. Okay. Why won't this stupid thing paste paste? It won't paste your thing. I have to type it in. That's weird. Okay. You are the power dot net locals. Didn't want to take the link for whatever reason. Okay. And on Rumble, and you know, Megan, yeah, go ahead, Joe. If, if I may, you know, one of the things that I'm, that I just keep thinking about is the parallel between parents and the and the shaming that they go through and the threats that they go through and and the parallel with victims of of sexual violence you know rape victims uh, sexual assault victims uh, domestic violence victims and the shaming that they have been subjected to historically in the court system um mm. you know and and all it does is it it, it makes victims particularly women less likely to report a, a sexual assault and it and it makes and it's going to make parents less likely to 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 take an infant or a child to the hospital when they have a legitimate need and so you know you think about the 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 objective of of the whole reporting system is to is to protect children and yet it's just driving them deeper and deeper into the shadows is it not ryan it absolutely is dr joe and and one of the things that that I spoke about or like to speak about just in general when I talk to people is um, one of the most gratifying conversations that I get to have with parents, Dr. Joe, mothers and fathers, is when I call them and say, you know, we vetted your case and your family is now our family. You know, your cause is now yeah. our cause and, and your fight is not now our fight. And most importantly, I get to tell them your babies are now our babies. You know? <laughs> and awesome. mothers and fathers um, and it, it, it breaks my heart because, you know, they start crying and, and I start crying over the phone with them because they have been so beat down. They have been so damaged. They, they've received this secondary trauma. Um, yes. And it's it's frightening because I, I get to have intimate conversations with these families and we take care of these families from, from day one. And Dr. Joe, their babies are regressing, right? Their yeah, emotional sure. and their spiritual health are regressing because they're not with mom and dad. They're, they're living right. with strangers. They're being transported to, you know, to visits by strangers. They only get to see mom and dad once or twice a week for maybe, for maybe 30 minutes at a time. 
in a stranger's home or at, 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 a, at an independent center. And it's causing this, this, this trauma to these children and to these parents that it's, it, it absolutely breaks my heart. I, I hate to see it, uh, Dr. Joe, because th this is unnecessary. And then when you try to bring this up to someone's attention, right? Like, hey, look at this, this trauma that you're, that you're causing these parents. It, it falls on deaf ears. And then other parents, you know, that we do get to speak with while we're vetting their cases. And by the way, Megan, we're vetting five, five other cases here in Georgia right now, all oh, under no. the same, yeah, all under the same circumstances. Child abuse pediatricians, DFACs, oh, yep, are seizing these children. Is it the same child abuse pediatricians also that you're looking at? Um, it, it is actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, it's, I'm not surprised. Well, I was just doing another, I'm, I'll, I'm going to be covering another case, uh, another, I have a lawsuit, a new one that I just got sent to me. And the doctor is a child abuse doctor that was already thrown out of Alaska and Wisconsin. Her name is Dr. Knox. She now practices in Florida, Joe. She's at the University hey. of Florida, it's still in child abuse pediatrics after being kicked out of two states and, you know, let go under, under circumstances that were sealed by the court for whatever mm -hmm. reason. But she's being yeah. sued by two families in Alaska yep. for the... Um, Barbara Knox, her name is. She's being sued by two families. Now, get this. She is connected. Now, yeah, go ahead. Wasn't Verena Brown in Alaska as well? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't have Verena's complete background, but I do know this. You remember that I started uh, reporting on the families, the 80 families in Pennsylvania at the Lehigh mm -hmm. Valley mm -hmm. Medical Center who were falsely accused of abuse, several of them of Munchausen. That doctor's name was Dr. Deborah Asario Jensen. In Pennsylvania, and there's a huge lawsuit against her right now too. Well, get this: I'm reading through this lawsuit of Barbara against Barbara Knox in Alaska. She's connected to Deborah Asario Jensen, who also switched states. She went from New York to Florida to Pennsylvania and did all the same things in those three states. And she still hasn't had her license taken away. Well, Barbara Knox got a letter of recommendation from Deborah Asario Jensen, which she used to get her her job at Florida in, in at the University of Florida. And so she didn't have to rely on and she used other recommendations from before she was kicked out of the practices in Wisconsin and Alaska. It, it is unbelievable that these people are allowed to continue to go on practicing. If you yeah. had been, you know, if you had been found to have fabricated these things in other states, you shouldn't be able to just go to another state and set up shop. And I'm starting to think, Ryan, that all these people know each other. They're all connected because it's a very small specialty it that, is. that a lot of doctors don't really want to go into because just like we heard uh, in the Kowalski case by the expert, Joe, what was his name? Newberger. 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 Eli Newberger, Newberger told us then that when the specialty was being created, he said, this is going to turn bad. This is going to turn into a bunch of people who are thumbs up or thumbs downing whether or not it's child abuse. Instead of being a holistic approach and instead of being multidisciplinary, it's going to end up just being one person say so without any expertise behind it. And he was absolutely correct. And now we have a bunch of people who are yeah. out of control, running around, destroying people's lives. And Make I'm it. tired of it. And there's and only. In, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ryan. I didn't mean to cut you off, Doctor Joe, but I, I wanted to, to 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 mention to Megan. You know, there's only about 400 child abuse certified child abuse pediatricians in the country, and since 2009, when when that subspecialty was was accepted by the uh, National Institute of Pediatrics or, or whatever it was, Board of Pediatrics, there has been an increase, a 55 percent increase in reported child abuse by medical professionals. 55 percent. And and I know you were talking about Dr. Barbara Knox, Megan, but guess who was the child abuse uh, pediatrician at Wolfson's Hospital in Florida who diagnosed Corey and Diana Sullivan, a, a family that we're helping here in Georgia? Guess who was the child abuse pediatrician down there who diagnosed um, Amelia Sullivan with oh, no. as, as, as Dr. Was Barbara Knox? Oh, Dr. Barbara Knox. Yep. Wolfson's Children's Hospital in Florida knew that Dr. Barbara Knox had been fired Shut up. from Wisconsin. And Megan, guess what? While she was in Alaska, every single member of her staff resigned in protest. I know. I know. And I'm reading Wolfson's this. Hi Wolfson's hired her. 
Wolfson's in Florida hired her, and when Corey and Diana Sullivan went down there for treatment of their baby, she diagnosed baby Amelia as having been abused. And guess what? Corey and Diana Sullivan are now fighting for their rights in Georgia because a juvenile court, a court judge wants to terminate their parental rights and put their three babies up for adoption. Oh, do they know? Do they know that she's being sued in Alaska? They do. And and guess what happened last week in court in juvenile court um, with Corey and Diana Sullivan? The judge and the defects lawyer tried to defend Barbara Knox. Tried to the defend judge. Yes. <laughs> Who's tried the judge? To... Who's the judge? I want to know who the judge is. So uh -oh. I'll, uh -oh. I'll tell you, I'll tell you off screen. I'll, I'll, right. I'll tell that off screen. But um, yeah, so the juvenile, uh, the attorney for, for defects and the juvenile. Give court me judge. his name. Yeah, I see your claws <laughs> up, Megan. Yeah. See, I'm in the so, right shirt today. I'm yeah, in the I'm right shirt today. You're the wearing room. the right shirt. So yeah. And, and not only, and not only is, is Barbara Knox the, the catalyst for this nightmare for the Sullivan family. Um, Ch uh, Wolfson's in, in Florida Children's Hospital knew about her background, knew that she was accused of lying and trying to trying to convince her co-workers to, to say that abuse was occurring when none occurred. They hired her, Megan. Wolfson's in Florida hired Dr. Barbara Knox, and she is down there in Florida right now destroying lives as a result. And, 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 and the, the lawsuit I'm reading says she is going to do this in every state she's in. She, yes. This is what's going to happen. And this is how these people behave. I, You guys, I had no idea Knox was a, attached to the Sullivan case. I know nothing about the Sullivan case. But do you see how it proves my theory, which is that these bad apples, they don't get held accountable for anything. And so they continue to do it. And when they get caught, they just move to a different state. I'm actually surprised that Sally Smith, and that's the the sound I play every time I say her name. I'm surprised that Sally Smith hasn't had to move states after all the yeah. people that she has, uh, all the lives she's destroyed. I'm surprised yeah. that woman is, that woman is unbelievable though. She will dig her heels in and stay. Well, Verena the, Brown the, in, in, in Choa in Atlanta, Verena Brown for the Thames, Verena Brown moves around from, from state to state. You know, she was, she yeah. was practicing in, 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 in Tennessee and was ruining lives in Tennessee as well. So, I mean, these, mm. these caps just travel, from state yeah. to state, when when they come under investigation, and and and, Do, and Doctor Joe, you you probably know about this more than I do, but it's like when a complaint is filed against a doctor at a hospital, rather than terminating that doctor, the hospitals are letting them resign in lieu of termination, and it effectively shuts down those internal investigations, and they get to bounce around from hospital to hospital. That, that's that's not entirely true in the state of Florida. If um, if a physician leaves the um, leaves hospital privileges while under investigation, it is a reportable incident nice. to the National Practitioner Data Bank. It is yeah. not reportable to the state, but it is reportable to the National Practitioner Database. So um, we've we've actually tried in Florida to address that somewhat. But you know, I wanted to make a comment about the about these child life specialists. First of all, their training is as much legal as it is medical. So at the end of their fellowship in CPT, are they really any more knowledgeable than a general pediatrician? I don't know the answer to that, but I do want to look into what their programs uh, require them to study. But the, you know, two weeks ago, week and a half ago, I had uh, Stephanie Spurgeon on as a guest. Um, oh yeah, that was a great interview, by the way. Thanks, Megan. I appreciate that. You know, coming from you, that means the world. Um, you know, Stephanie is someone who was um, accused uh, uh, accused of and convicted of. She was actually charged with felony uh, felony murder, um, and was and ended up being convicted of felony manslaughter for uh, a child abuse death that was that never had evidence presented, just opinion of. Cue the music, Sally Smith. Um, and she she uh, she made allegations, but didn't present physics, didn't present physical findings, just opinion. And that seems to be the 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 pattern here is that judges ex and prosecutors accept opinion without the data to back up the diagnosis. And you know, listen. Um, I, I understand there's not a ton of people and there's not a ton of physicians who 
really understand the granular nuance of, of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. It's just not very common. But as an OBGYN resident, and even as a medical student, I learned back when <laughs> dinosaurs roamed the earth and I was in training, I learned about osteogenesis imperfecta. This is not a new diagnosis. CRPS is a fairly new diagnosis, right? OI is not. So if I know about it and I'm an old guy, why don't these specialists who are diagnosing it at a, at a they don't much believe more rapid it, rate than most? They don't actually I, believe but it. Why don't they even know I, about it? They know about it. And they, they in the Hernandez case, Dr. Pena discounted it completely because they did one or two uh, gene tests that came back negative, but they didn't do the complete battery from what I understand. Um, and I still don't know. I, we don't know if that was what it is. I don't know. The specialists are still doing their tests. But if you ask me, you should never, ever go with abuse if you haven't done a complete battery of all the gene codes that right. it could be, that there could be some underlying thing. Sean McMillan, my friend Sean McMillan, who has caps mm -hmm. and stems law, he is currently suing a hospital in California for taking a little girl with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and, oh, my God, and CRPS. She had both both. Imagine Goodness. the pain. Uh, I've been reading through that lawsuit with him and we're going to continue that and finish it soon. Um, but he's got such a busy schedule that I have to break it up into pieces for him <laughs> to you know, be here because all he does all day long is sue CPS. Well, this case is so similar to the Maya Kowalski case. And again, child abuse pediatricians colluding with the state to remove a child without listening to the doctors. The doctors are literally saying, um, the, like the specialists, not the child abuse pediatricians, but the specialists at the hospital are saying, this is what it is. It is not abuse. Do not take this child. And yet they do it anyway. Yeah. Ryan, I am I am so upset about this. I, I'm trying to keep my emotions under in check here because I will say things that I don't want to say. But yeah. I feel like there has to be some kind of investigation nationally into these people, into what has been done, like an audit. We need an audit. We need someone to audit the cases that these child abuse pediatricians have worked on, especially if they've ever been sued. If they've ever been sued by anybody that, that says they put false information in a report or they you know, falsely accuse me, we need real investigations into this. And, and Megan, I, I would suggest that... I would be. I would suggest to you that tracking lawsuits is probably not a good uh, indicator, because if you want your kid back, you're going to sign an NDA. You're going to sign an agreement. You're going to listen. And well, that's true. There's not going to be a, a lot of people who will sue who get yeah. to that point, right? You and I talked about it <sighs> last night when we were when we were talking about um, you know me being on your show today. You you joining me later tonight when I have. Uh, uh, Ryan's founder, uh, uh, Spike Cohen on, um, you know, we both have grown up kids. I just sent two kids back to college yesterday and my wife and I walked around the house last night, like somebody had kicked our puppy. I mean, it, we were so <laughs> sad about pain. it. I, I could pain. not imagine losing them as infants or toddlers. I know um, me either. So, you know, the whole idea, I, listen, and I don't want to come off as, you know, keep the family together at all costs, because there are lots of times when, when abused children are taken out of unsafe conditions and put into an imperfect but safer environment. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not throwing out the baby with the bathwater, no, no pun intended. But when there's this much conflicting information, and the veracity of the witness, you know, when you talk about, you know, someone who has had issues in Wisconsin and, and Alaska and, and, you know, everywhere else, you know, it, it just seems like it needs to be a higher burden of proof before you have that kind of an impact, A, on a family and B, on a developing child, right? Mm -hmm. Childhood trauma causes so much so adult much bad behavior.
right? So much. I mean, we are a reflection of who well, we were as children. Well, there are studies, Joe. There are so many studies out there that say removing children from parents is it actually, especially when you take them as infants, causes brain damage because the mm. neurological connections that are supposed to be making those, you know, those bonding connections, imprinting, all, they, sure, they get they get interrupted. And it causes actual brain damage, not just interrupted connections, but brain damage. This is yeah. something that the, st that the federal government has already said, we need to avoid at all costs taking children from parents if it's not absolutely necessary. And yet we keep on seeing this over and over again that yeah. they just don't care. Ryan, we were talking about, let's go back to the, um, to the Tim's case because I have questions. Sure. Earl, you brought up the name Earl Newton. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm making notes for my new wall. I'm creating okay. a new wall for these people. Uh, Earl Newton is the uh, prosecutor, is that correct? Uh, yes, he's the acting district attorney in Gordon County where Brady and Carrie live. All right. So he decided on March 5th that he in, he's going to indict them, correct? That's correct. Yes. So now they have been indicted. Correct. Yep. They have been Do indicted. Do you have a copy of that indictment? I do have a copy of that indictment that I can email you. I would love to have that. Um, so if you could send that to me, I would, I would love that. So now that they've been indicted, how long until they have until they actually go to a trial? Uh, in reality, it's probably six to eight months. I mean, it could it really it depends on the trial calendar of the judges. But if you just want to start from when discovery is 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 filed and discovery is exchanged, motions are are filed, motions are heard. And then trial is set, I would think by the end of this year would be realistic. And what evidence have they, do you know what evidence they presented to the grand jury to get, it was a grand jury indictment? It was a grand jury indictment and it would just be a testimonial evidence. So no, no physical evidence. Just the testimony of the doctor who wasn't there, wasn't present when the alleged incident occurred. Oh, so they, they wouldn't have even received testimony from the doctor. So the grand jury received testimony from the law enforcement officer who who filed the report or possibly from the an investigator with the D district attorney's office itself. But uh, during a grand wow. jury presentment, there's there's no testimony from, from experts. That all comes at trial. So it just would have been uh, testimony, just oral testimony from the from the law enforcement official. Wow. All right. So what are the charges? Do you know how, what the charges are and how many on each parent? So the charges are uh, aggravated battery and cruelty to children. And um, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure of how many counts there are of each. Um, but when I send the indictment, I'll I'll I'll, I'll send I'll, I'll excuse okay. me, I'll review it and send it to you. And the baby is with the maternal grandmother still. Uh, paternal, 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 grandma. paternal yeah. grandma. OK, paternal well, at grandma. least at least he's with family. Um, because yep. my God, losing a child to the foster care system, I cannot even believe, I can't even fathom. Yeah. I cannot, not with what I know about our foster care system. Uh, Duncan Idaho on local sent uh, a tip, says, here's my last $5 I was going to use for Rom and Megan. I tell you not to send me your grocery money. <laughs> Uh, but I just wanted to say that all these cases we've been following remind me again and again that our founders were truly visionaries. Mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. Thomas Jefferson. Thank you, Duncan. You always send me the best stuff. God, you send me the best stuff. That gives me the chills. Every time I read Thomas Jefferson's words, I get chills up and down my spine uh, because we have not, we don't read those words often enough. We don't read the words that our founders wrote often enough that say, it is your duty, your solemn duty to throw off a government that has become tyrannical. And th I can't think of another word to describe what is happening to these people. It's tyranny. Other than it's, tyranny. tyranny. It's, it's, it's tyranny. And if, if there's another way to describe what's happened to these babies other than medical kidnapping, I, I'm all ears because I mean, this is state sponsored lawful medical kidnapping. And I know that you know, I can't even extreme. use that. I cannot use medical kidnapping in the, in the headline and the title on YouTube. I can't use the word kidnapping. They will yeah. not let me monetize the channel or, or the stream if I do. So we can't even say the thing that the government is doing to parents. And I, and okay, do you think, because people ask me this all the time, Ryan, and you, you're very close to this issue. Do you think that this is mostly malicious on behalf of these government agents or incompetence 
I think it's a combination of both. I think it starts with incompetence and then it, it becomes uh, malicious when they when they do not acknowledge that they've made a mistake. They dig their heels in yeah. and, and they try to destroy these families. So I think the initial is just abs absolute incompetence and, and ignorance on the part of defects. And then it just transitions into um, th when they dig their heels in, it just transitions into them just being just absolutely downright nasty to these families. We see this so often where where these people and I am talking about the child abuse pediatricians. I'm talking about the um, the the defects workers, social workers. I, I've been watching. I watch Sean McMillan's depositions that he puts on YouTube religiously. And right now he is doing the Rachel Bruno case, which is a case I followed and reported on years ago. And he is now putting up all the depositions. So I watch those every night like a soap opera. And what I see in his depositions of these child uh, welfare workers is exactly that. It is that they got somehow butthurt along the way, whether someone, you know, a parent questioned their authority or didn't go along with the program and they got upset and they dug their heels in and they refused to admit that they made a mistake. And I just, I feel like, I think all of us should do a gut check in whatever role you're in to make sure that you are not being one of these people, that you are, whenever you've made a mistake, that you own up to it, that you come clean about it and you move on because there's no, and apologize if you need to. I don't know what it is with this type of personality, but they continue to come up in these rules of people who have power over us. And I don't understand, is it, a, is it like a personality trait that they just, these types of people get these positions? Because it happens over and over and over again it absolutely does and and it and it can stop you know it, it can actually absolutely stop this do, it doesn't have to be this way it, it absolutely doesn't there needs to be oversight there needs to be checks and balances you know if you're going to accuse a parent of abusing a child there needs to be an independent review prior to you seizing that child there needs to be a secondary opinion offered um, about let's let's talk about this. Let's let's say is this abuse? Okay, why do you think it's abuse? Is there another? Is there a plausible medical explanation for what's happening? Let's discuss that rather than just jumping in right off the bat and seizing a baby from from a mother and father. And then, and I don't know about in Florida, Doctor Joe, but I know here in Georgia, once the state seizes a child, they limit the testing that is that is done on that baby. So right. in the case of Brady and Tim's, like. Brady and Carrie Timms or, or with Corey and Diana Sullivan, they've been petitioning the court for oh, a no. long time. Like, Hey, let's test, let's test our baby. Like, you know, if, if you're, if you're saying this is abuse, we're saying it's not, let's get an independent test. And the state says, no, they, they don't allow it to happen or they do allow it to happen, but it's seven, eight, nine, ten 10 months down the road. And the damage has already been done to the baby and the family. This is incredible. You know what else that, that reminds me too, of this happened in the Kowalski case where the parents keep they actually keep the uh the medical power over the child even though the state has custody the parents have to consent to the things that are done to the child medically yeah. yet the the state doesn't listen to the parents when the parents want to do a certain test and like in the kowalski case they wouldn't even tell them they would just do it anyway right. uh i don't understand how because in most of these cases, I think parents keep the medical power over their children, yet the state won't work with them to get the baby tested, to do the underlying tests. And wouldn't you think that if there's really a problem with the baby, like let's say if they really believed that it could be abuse, instead of like taking custody right away, why not hold the child in the hospital under doctor supervision while they rule out whatever they're ruling out and work with parents to do that instead of yes joe that wasn't necessarily the the healthiest environment for maya kowalski to be well, in. that's just true that's true but i mean they didn't even out. do but they didn't even try that though they didn't rule out anything well, well no but and still there were nefarious things that were taking place right the 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 surveillance in the video room the 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 sitting on right you know on Beatty's lap the you know so Ugh. you know be careful what you wish for well you that's know the, true. the crazy thing is to your to your early point megan you know ryan talked about the family taking the baby up to boston children's hospital and if boston children's hospital is not recognized by everybody as the premier children's hospital in america 
Of course, they I've kidnapped Justina met, Pelletier too, so I don't I've have never them that high anybody, on my list. <laughs> but I've never, but I've never met other than you. I've never met anybody who considers them anything but top three, right? And the fact that Defects had a staffer accompany the parents for the visit and still was not swayed to follow this expert's opinion. You know, how much of it is kabuki theater and checking boxes rather than actually trying to help the child and the family? Mm -hmm. Which is what, if you look at the DFAC's mission, that's what they're committed to, right? Mm -hmm. Healthy kids, healthy families. And supposedly, Ryan, that, have you? That's not walking the walk. Have no, you contacted? Not. Have you contacted that uh, board that oversees the defects? Uh, allegedly, we during one of our um, action streams, I had I have all those um, contacts for the the board members that are supposed to. I guess they meet quarterly or whatever to review cases and we did get their attention and they they said they were going to review the hernandez case at the next uh, meeting could have they been contacted about the tim's case as well so we we've reached out and we've got limited response um on our request for for a review so we're, we're actually in the process of escalating that now when we start reaching out to um, governor camp here in georgia we're going to ask for an independent review of these cases i mean it's it has to happen there needs to be an we need to know you know how something like this occurred and why it continues to occur like there's not checks and balances there's not oversight so somebody needs to be held accountable for this because if not, other Georgia families are going to be adversely impacted by these by these child abuse pediatricians. And what about Earl Newton? Is is he a uh, is he an elected official? So uh, actually, he has not been elected yet. So the the DA, the elected DA, was appointed by the governor to a, a vacant judgeship there in Gordon County. And so the governor has appointed Earl Newton, the acting district attorney, and has not uh. solidified him in that position as the district attorney yet. So if that happens, then Earl Newton won't be up for re-election for another two years. So he looks like a pinhead. I hate to say it, but <laughs> he he does not look like a guy who I'm going to be able to reason with. This dude looks like a pinhead. Uh, Earl Newton. Earl Newton, you, ha you have some explaining to do, sir, uh, because, yeah, I see that he was sworn in as acting district attorney. So when is the um, when's the next election coming up? So if he is actually, if Earl Newton is actually appointed by Governor Kemp as the district attorney, then the election would be in two years. But he's so, actually not, he's he's not even, a, he's just an acting. He's just an attorney. acting, correct. Yeah, oh, he's he's not the district attorney yet. He's just, that's interesting. Um, before he even officially takes office as the DA, which we, we fully expect him to be appointed by Governor Kemp as the DA, he's already yeah. making mistakes. He's already well, showing maybe us we can that. Throw a, maybe we can throw a wrench in that plan. That'd be great. Uh, because I think that the, politically, this is a good target, by the way. I mean, if this guy, what? Well, like, are there no murders in Georgia that this guy can go after? Are there no murderers? There's no drug dealers? Like, sir, you're indicting, you chose to indict a family that the entire world is going, we don't think they did this. Well, what else is happening in Georgia that you could be doing, sir? I'm sure there's all kinds of shit going on in Atlanta. You got drugs all over the place. You got crime. You got gangs. But no, he's going after Mr. and Mrs. Tim's. That's what right. this guy is doing. Right. Yeah, and he's I, not the smartest tool in the shed. No, I assure you, the, the first court appearance that they have, the courtroom is going to be packed out with no less than about 50 to 100 Tim supporters all staring him down. Like Good. this is absolutely ludicrous that he is intent on prosecuting a factually innocent family. And he's trying to destroy their lives just as much as Defax is trying to destroy their lives. Well, here's the also the good news about Earl. Earl's got an email address that's public. So when I when I uh, figure out my um, my action streams, you better believe that Mr. Newton's email address will be included, and we will send him some 
very civilly worded emails to let him know how we feel about this situation. And remember, like Spike Cohen always says, you must, must, must use all the civil words in your language. Think Jane Austen, not Snoop Dogg, because if you go after him with Snoop language, they say you're threatening their lives because words are violence, people. So remember to insult like Dr. Newberger would, like, like a Jane Austen novel. And that's how we, we put our insults in. We, we, we put them, they're very intellectual insults. They're still insults, but nobody could say they were, they were threats of any kind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we we have templates on our website as well, and we have templates set up specifically for uh, Mr. Newton that that people can email him, and we've already gotten, I would say realistically, he's probably received a thousand emails from our supporters and the Tim supporters, and yet he still indicted them instead of dropping the charges. Did he get those emails before the indictment or Abs before? Absolutely before. So we we've so been he's a person who's actually intent on doing this because he's digging his heels in. He's one of those guys. Can't Correct. admit that he's wrong. Correct. Was Correct. he in Was he in control two years ago or was it somebody else? He, he was not. So uh, Mr. Patel was the, the DA two years ago and he was uh, an assistant DA for Mr. Patel. He's one of the senior DAs or ADAs in the office. And where's right? Patel now? He's now a Superior Court judge in, in Gordon County. Oh, he's the, yeah. oh uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm sure yeah. he is. I'm yeah. sure he is. He's not the judge, though, that's over this case, is he? No, he, he can't be. I don't, I don't he believe can't. he's going to. Oh. Yeah. So, but yeah, Mr. Patel actually had this case two years ago, chose to sit on it for two years, uh, let let Brady and Carrie um, suffer for two years. And then when we start the email campaign to start drawing national attention to what's going on, Mr. Newton, uh, two years after the fact, in, indicts Brady and Carrie. And you said wow. that in Georgia, they have four years to indict. Yes, they had, they had four years. And so they had... That's they had, incredible. Yeah, it's That, that it's seems terrible. so unfair. It seems so unfair. Yeah, it's it's terrible that they're able to do this to, to factually innocent families. And they get away with it. And they get away with it. All right. So what else don't we know? Who else do we need to know? Who are who are the other bad players in this, in this story that I need to have on my list here? Uh, for the Tim's case? Mm-hmm. So... Other than the child abuse pediatricians right now, um, because the, they have been indicted, it, it, it kind of um, absolves local law enforcement. Even though the, the Calhoun Police Department was part of this, was a catalyst for this, uh, Chief, Chief Tony Powell and, and Sergeant Faulkner were involved in this. Um, now that Earl Newton has decided to indict him, it's really his show. It's really Mr. Newton's show at this point. And the defects of uh, supervisor on this case, do we know who those people are? Are they the same supervisors in the Hernandez case? No, they're not. So defects has essentially dropped their case against the Thames because oh, um, they did. Because custody was 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 turned over to um to, to Brady's mom, to Brady's mom and dad. So. Okay. So custody is permanent with with his mom? Right now, yes. And so it's been two years that, that Brady and Carrie have been without their baby. So Do they have visitation at least? Th they do, yes. They, they can see their baby. It's Thank just God. that they can't take him home. They, he, can't, he, can't, um, he can't be in the same home. And, and adding insult to injury, Megan and Dr. Joe, is um, you know, Brady has a, a baby from a previous relationship. And so the mm, bond okay. conditions restrict him from being able to see his son without supervised visitation and bond conditions restrict restrict the two brothers from from being together in the same house so defects and, oh and these juvenile court judges um and these superior court judges now are are continuing to, to fracture families here in georgia this is outrageous and i feel like senator osoff ought to be angrier about this than he is uh, and i felt i feel like he has been the most responsive uh to our you know, reaching out. And those of you who are in Georgia, you might want to consider finding out the governor's schedule and showing up some with some big signs. And, and you know, some heckling might be in order at this point with the, with the governor for not at least acknowledging when these, you know, organizations are reaching out to him. Um, you know what your problem is, Ryan? You probably haven't given Governor Kemp's reelection campaign enough money. Have you considered trying to pay him off? <laughs> no, but this, the sad part is, Megan, is uh, Governor Kemp's, he, he's unable to be reelected. This is his last term as governor, so he's got a couple more years. 
and it's not politically expedient for him to get involved in something like this, right? Yeah. Mm. Um, because he's not up for re-election. He, you know, he can't be based on the state constitution. Yeah, but he, he could go out and burn it all down on the way, you know, like it, his his reputation right now is so bad anyway, being involved in this Trump indictment thing and with Republicans, he's, his name is Mud. So, I mean, I don't see what he has to lose. Duncan Idaho, thanks for the reminder. Civil heckling, civil heckling only. Yeah. Use your use your nice words. Um, but yeah, I, oh God, I just, this whole thing. All right, I'm going to get to some of these super chats here. Um, Ryan, how much more time do you have left? All, all the time you need, Megan. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yep. Connie B., thanks for becoming a member. Welcome to the Fox Den. Uh, that's the sound of a fox, by the way, Ryan, in case you've <laughs> never heard it. It's really okay. weird. What does the fox say? The fox screams. Duncan Idaho, thanks for being a member for five months. Says, Though, through our own neglect and apathy for the past three or more generations, we've been setting this family up for this exact situation. It's truly a travesty. It's not good. Sarah Adams, thanks for the super chat, says, what happened to services to families versus removing? Uh, yeah, I don't, uh, in all the time I've been covering this, CPS always talks about services. I've actually never seen any services be given to anyone. All they, the only service they seem to do is just taking kids out of homes. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there aren't services. I just have never seen it work. Hallie P. Thanks for the super chat says I'm catching up. Lady doc looks creepy AF. I, it wasn't a great picture. And I think she uses that for her professional photo. Duncan Idaho. Thanks. The super chat says I strongly believe that in the overwhelming majority of cases, it's better to be raised by your stupid, bad parents than be a ward of the state. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And how much more tragic is it when your parents aren't stupid or bad and they just were victims of this terrible system that we find ourselves caught in. Shelly Hall, thanks for the super chat, says, do they have two children? And if so, did they take both? Uh, they have one child that they took and he has a, a child from another another uh, relationship and he has to have, is he paying for that supervised visitation, by the way, Ryan? No, no, not, not that I'm aware of. No, it's, it's just something that was agreed upon um, by the court. So I don't believe he's having to pay for that. I don't believe Brady's yeah. having to pay for that. That's good because sometimes they, they charge you for that and it's outrageous. Duncan, Idaho, it really is just child trafficking and the monetary incentive comes from the federal government. All of this is subsidized at the federal level. Well, I have wanted to chase down, you know, the budget for a long time and it's really hard. They hide the stuff. Tomorrow's show is going to be very, very interesting because I've got the Lehigh County um, auditor who's going to be on my channel, Mark Pinsley. He's the one. He's the one who blew the whistle on Deborah Asario Jensen. He's going to be on my channel tomorrow at 11 a.m. We're going to go over the Pennsylvania uh, false allegations there. There's a lawsuit that's been filed. I need to go over that tonight and highlight some good stuff so we can go over it with Mark. Mark Pinsley, by the way, is the first Democrat I'm ever going to publicly vouch for and tell you to go vote for. <laughs> He's running for auditor of Pennsylvania, of the Lehigh Valley, the general auditor. Right now he is the um, controller. And this man is going after DCF like nobody's business that I've ever seen before. And if you want to talk about budget, come back tomorrow because he's the guy to talk to about it. He's not only that he not only discovered what was happening, but he is helping the families in Lehigh uh, in Lehigh County go after this hospital and the doctor. So you guys might want to tune in for that. Um, Salam, Salem YouTube became a YouTube member. Welcome to the Fox Den. It's weird in here. I apologize ahead of time. All right, let's see. Tracy Fagan, thanks for the super chat. So no goodbye Earl by the Dixie Chicks song. <laughs> do not repeat the Dixie Chicks lyrics to the governor. No, you cannot do that. That would be that would be a very bad idea. Although the Supreme Court just ruled, I think, that lyrics cannot be used as evidence. Uh, and so they had to throw all that out in the Melly case, right? The lyrics of uh, being used as evidence that he's a murderer. Very interesting case. Very, very interesting. Uh, Devence Moore says, gonna start a revolution. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. We're not gonna let this stand. This aggression will not stand, man. It will not. Uh, I'm tired of it. I'm just sick of it. All right. So what did we make? Oh, I know. Let's talk about the Sullivans. I know nothing about this case, except now I'm super interested because okay. 
Barbara Knox is involved. And I was just yeah. digging into her this morning, like literally just yeah. someone just sent me this stuff. And I had heard of her like peripherally, but I never looked into a case. Well, I got the filing and now I'm like into it. So let's hear it. How is she connected to let's hear about the Sullivans. Okay. And Dr. Joe, I think you're, you'll probably have a lot to say about this uh, because it's, it, it rely, it's, it's heavy on the medical. It's heavy on the medical. So yeah. Corey and Diana Sullivan, they live in, in South Georgia. They live in Camden County, which is kind of in between Savannah and um, in Jacksonville, Florida. So they have three they have three children. They were all born uh, by IVF. And uh, they're they're they have two twins and a four year old, the four year old. Uh, um, <clears throat> no health issues. The, the boy, their son, Corey, one of the twins had no health issues. Um, in utero, the, the baby, Amelia, the one with the health issues, um, she, she was not growing properly, right? She was just having developmental issues. Um, there was restricted blood flow to the placenta. And actually, baby Amelia, uh, Dr. Joe, um, was diagnosed both in utero and, and out of utero with um, interuterine growth retardation, anemia, low platelets, limited wow. bone mineral depos uh, deposition, delayed bone development. Um, hyperchlorme hyperchloric acidosis, generalized demineralization. Chlor yes, uh, generalized demineralization of the spine and softness of the bones. And so, as a matter of fact, before baby Amelia was born, doctors uh, told Corey said, "If if you deliver naturally, it's probably going to crush every bone in her body." So, both <gasps> twins were taken by um, emergency C-section, um, and baby Amelia from, from birth, um, she spent the first 42 days of her life in the NICU. Um, and then when they, they took her out of the NICU, she was released from the NICU. Uh, she was still experiencing health issues. So they took her to a hospital there, um, in Camden County. The, the doctors in Camden County said, you need to take Wait, her to is Camden, Florida or Georgia. It's in Georgia. It's just right on it's the Georgia. line. So they, okay. they live just in North, Georgia. just North of Jacksonville, just North, just okay, north of gotcha. Jacksonville. Sorry. So uh, doctors at uh, Southeast Georgia and the health system uh, there in Camden County uh, recommended that they take baby Amelia to Wilson's Children's Hospital in Jacksonville. And so that's where um, Corey and Diana, that's where their nightmare really started because they met Dr. Knox there. And Dr. Knox mm -hmm. accused uh, Corey and, and Diana of abusing their baby. Now, mind you, uh, Dr. Joe, uh, baby Amelia at that time uh, didn't weigh more than about six or seven pounds. She was she was young. Uh, Do you know her small. birth weight by any chance? Not even quite four pounds. Okay. Wow. And so Dr. Knox. Was she full term? Uh, they, they took her early. They took the babies early. Twin, they did. Twins generally are born preterm. Earlier, yeah. Twins, yeah. twins rarely make it to their due date. And, and, a, and an intrauterine growth restricted baby. We don't use the other R word any longer, Ryan. It's right. intrauterine growth restriction. Okay. And IUGR babies are, are by definition small for gestational age. So. Okay. And while they were there, uh, Dr. Joe and, and, and Megan, Dr. Knox accused um, the parents of abusing, physically harming uh, baby Amelia. Um, as did a matter she not have access to her she birth did. records? She did. She was told about all this. Um, and so because Corey and Diana live in Georgia and uh, they took the baby to the hospital in Florida, the doctors, Dr. Knox notified DFAX in Georgia that they believed that Corey and Diana were abusing baby Amelia. So DFAX ends up seizing all three of their children. Mm. And um, that's what Corey and Diana are struggling with. Now, Corey was actually arrested by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation and charged with felonies for um, aggravated child, you know, aggravated uh, battery and for cruelty to children. Now, Corey has not been indicted yet. So we've already started. When sending, was you know, this? When was the arrest? December, uh, December of 23. Oh, God, this is a recent one. Okay. Yeah. And so recently, Dr. Joe, um, Diana has been diagnosed with. EDS and with OI. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. so uh, is that the mom? Yes. Yes. That's the mom. She's been diagnosed with EDS and OI. And pre, so, pre delivery or since? I, I believe it's all been diagnosed since, since okay. Dr. Joe. Yep. Um, because they just didn't know at the time what, you know, what was going on or what, what they were having sure. to contend with. So these diagnoses were made because, um, 
you know, DFACS is saying, we're going to terminate your parental rights. We're going to put your babies up for adoption. So parents are trying to do everything in their power to, to prove to the state that, you know, this is not abuse. Like our babies were all born IVF. We spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, our life savings to have these babies. There's no way in the world we're going to harm our babies. These are, you know, diagnosed medical conditions that were both in utero and, and, and post-birth. Um, so, we, Megan, we've already started the email campaign to the district attorney there in, in Camden County, just basically begging him, please don't don't prosecute Corey. And so who is the district attorney there? Keith Higgins. Let's hope that he's a normal person. We hope so. And, and Dr. Joe, um, the the juvenile court judge has not has ordered non reunification in this case and wants to. What? Yeah. And so right now, but the judge did order the juvenile court judge there in Camden County did order that that the children could be medically tested. Now, this is, you know, months after they were seized can be medically tested. <clears throat> but, you know, obviously DFACS is involved. And so they're going to say where they can and can't go and things of that nature. But um, I think I think the babies are going to be taken to a hospital in Florida for this genetic testing. Um, not not going to be the, the hospital there at Wilson's, I believe. But um, they're fighting tooth and nail. I mean, they're trying their best to have their, their family reunited. Again, these are factually innocent parents who have not abused their babies. There's a plausible medical explanation as to, to what, what happened to, um, to baby Amelia yet, you know, DFACS is ignoring reality in my opinion, Dr. Joe, that they're just saying, no, this is, this is abuse. You know, Dr. Pena, one of the doctors at CHOA here in Atlanta, you know, reviewed the medical record and, you know, they're they're just still digging their heels in. Defax is digging their heels in. Juvenile court judges digging their heels in, and they're not willing to face reality right now. And it's it's yeah. fracturing this family. You know, what's this, hilarious is that the Camden County District Attorney's website says justice with integrity and competent professionalism. That's their that's their motto. I think yeah. we should use that phrase in in our emails when we send them to the district attorney. There, we expect you. <laughs> to have integrity and be competent. Integrity with competence would be nice here. Yep, and it's, again, the the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, the special agent who arrested Corey, relied solely on the opinion of Dr. Knox. And these juvenile court judges yet again are relying on the sole opinion of these caps. And they're unwilling to let any additional medical experts um, who contradict what these caps are saying. They, they're really and truly restricting their their testimony and their, the judge is not giving it any additional weight or giving it the proper weight that he should. So this is Keith Higgins. He's the DA in uh, Camden County. Uh, he looks a little sweaty, maybe under the lights, but maybe he, he's got more hope. We've got more hope for him. He looks a little more competent than the other one. The other one just looked like a rat. This one, maybe. Maybe we have well, a hope decent that, person. You hope that as a former Marine, he still believes in duty on our country, right? He still believes in some, some and he's value a father of, of four family. children. He right. has four children, right. and hopefully he has had a sick child before and knows what it's like to take a child to the hospital and not know yeah. what's going to happen to you. I, this whole thing has made parents so scared to take their children to the emergency room or to the hospital I, I know that I have felt that myself. And in fact, I often, if if my child has to go to the emergency room, I will want my husband to go with me just so that I have, you know, extra witnesses. And also because I feel like doctors sometimes treat women, um, I think some of these doctors treat women a little bit differently, maybe because we react a little more emotionally. Like that's what happened with Beata, right? Beata was very upset and very emotional and it didn't go over well with the doctors and Jack was more reserved and they said nicer things about him. And so I'm always terrified. Like if I have to, it, I don't think parents should feel that way. Our, our medical, um, our medical community should not be set up as the enemy of parents. And yet that's how it feels. And again, the orientation of child abuse pediatricians is to, you know, advocate for the children, right? But it need not be a zero sum game, you know. Um, you know, in this, in in the so, so Ryan, I will tell you that um, I saw Spike's um, post on X Twitter. I think it was last Wednesday, 
when he talked about the judge ordering non-reunification in the Sullivan's case. Yes. And, you know, Megan, I know that you love my good hair, but my good hair was standing on end. I mm. was, I, 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 I literally had difficulty catching my breath after reading it because candidly, all you need to do is, is start with the prenatal record. What happened during the pregnancy and what were the diagnoses that were very extensive in the prenatal period? Yeah. You know, most moms don't go through that kind of a battery of testing. And, you know, for there to be zero question in the, um, in the eyes of the child abuse pediatrician who, who, you know, declared that this is abuse without considering any of the prenatal history is, is, is just, I mean, it's, it's hard to reconcile. It is. It's, um, Dr. Joe and Megan, I've, I've personally met with Corey and Diana. Uh, I, I drove down to, to Camden County from Atlanta and, and spent a Saturday with them. Um, it's, it's absolutely heartbreaking what's happened to their family. Um, Corey and Diana have, have been forced to move out of their home. So um, Corey's mom can, can, can move in, into the home and, and take care of, of the babies. Um, you know, they struggled, Dr. Joe, for 13, 14 plus years to have these babies, you know, through IVF. Sure. And then to have the state accuse them of abusing the babies that they fought so hard to have, it, it absolutely right. breaks my heart. And um, we're hopeful uh, Dr. Joe, that we're making headway here. We're hopeful that um, the district attorney will, will listen to reason. We're hopeful that the juvenile court judge um, will listen to reason. Um, we're confident that once, um, you know, the babies are tested, genetically tested, that some of these inherited conditions that yeah. that mom has, you know, is we're passed down to, to the babies and that will um, vindicate both Corey and, and Diana because Again, Dr. Joe, they're, they're factually innocent. They, they have not abused their babies. They would never in a million years yeah. abuse their babies. And it's just so heartbreaking to see that, you know, not only are, you know, like the Hernandez family and the Tim's family, but, you know, Corey and Diana, you know, they're having to fight on two fronts. They're having to fight in juvenile court and they're having to fight in, in superior court on these criminal charges. And these families, you know, they're going bankrupt. Like these families are spending yeah. seventy five to $100,000 um, you know, as terrible as it sounds, they're having to defend their innocence, right? They're having to prove to the state their innocence. Um, when that's just the opposite of what our, our criminal justice system is, uh, our, our cardinal rule of the criminal justice system, you know, everybody and everybody's is like, well, they can sue then. Yeah. How <clears throat> much do they have a couple hundred thousand dollars to draw after they've get bankrupted by the state doing this fighting in juvenile court and then criminal court, where are they going to come up with the, how much did Greg spend in the Kowalski case? What was the litigation <laughs> cost? En enough to have to sell his house. I, it was in the millions. That's, so yeah, he had he had to sell his waterfront home to and fund... take his kids out of private school and like change yeah. their entire lives. And yeah. the, you're people don't have the kind of money that it would take to get the justice they deserve. M to this make. Is, <clears throat> To add insult, nor did they Megan. have the documentation like like uh, Beata created. I mean, that was the thing that there's no way that Johns Hopkins ever expected that Beata took such meticulous notes and videos and still mm -hmm. photographs. And, but she was a she was a professional nurse, and they are taught to document. Um, she's the gold standard as far as I've ever uh, experienced in thirty plus years in medicine. Mm. Dr. Joe and Megan, an, another way that, the, you know, the state is, is crippling Corey and Diana financially is the juvenile court judge ordered that Corey and Diana pay $2,200 a month in child support. Oh, oh, I love it. They take your kids and they get paid by the federal government to support those kids, but they still want child support from you. They're double dipping all over the place. Yep. What a bunch of crooks. Yep. And and, and, you know, Corey and Diana, um, you know, we're trying to raise as much money as we can to support them, just like we're trying to raise money. You are the powers trying to raise money for the Hernandez family and the Tim's family, because these families, you know, some of them are, are fortunate enough to have the financial means to to defend themselves and others are not. And so we're just trying to level the playing field because to fly in some of these experts, Dr. Joe, and have them testify in court is tens of thousands of dollars. Um, and so we're yeah. just trying to do everything in our power to make sure that that these families um, 
have equal access to justice, right? Um, because right now they're just being railroaded by the system. And so we want to make sure that they have the financial means to, to be able to support themselves, support their, to support and, their babies. And Ryan, thank God there are organizations like you are the power and the innocence project and the exoneration project, because those two organizations, plus the, gosh, I can never remember the one out of Madison, Wisconsin about forensic sciences, but those three organizations are, are, are discreetly responsible for Stephanie Spurgeon walking free today. Um, and it's because just as you and your team have embraced the Sullivans, the Tims, the Hernandez families, and dozens of others, these three organizations embraced the Stephanie's case. And, you know, they were the ones that kept fighting for her just as you're doing for them. So thank you for the work that you do, you and, and Spike are doing with You Are the, you are the Power. It's um, I appreciate that, Dr. Joe. It's it's satisfying um, to, to, to be able to help these families. And, and and, you know, we're not going to relent. We're not going to stop until you know they're reunited. You know, it's it's a it's a long process. We understand it's a it's a marathon. It's not a 5K or, or a 10K race. It's a marathon and, and we're in it. Yeah. We're at about mile 22 or 23 right now in some of these cases. And so are they are these children, the Sullivan children, are they in foster care? Um, um, excuse me, Megan. As of right now, no. Um, Diana's mother has custody of the babies. Thank, oh, thank, thank goodness. God. Um, which is um, one of the reasons why why Corey and Diana moved out of their home. Um, they they let Diana's mom move into their home where she could she could care for all three children, and, and Corey and Diana moved out to give their babies a, a safe place and a and a comfortable place to be. Mm. This is unbelievable. I just really feel like what is what what are the DAs in Georgia doing? They they really must be bored. There must not be any crime going on in in Georgia, and it, that they are just wasting the taxpayer money on going after families like this. This is just it's an outrage. It's an absolute. When's the next court proceeding in the Sullivan case? What's coming up next? So the juvenile proceeding. I believe there's a a review perhaps in three months, Megan, but don't hold me to that because the judge has said that he's willing to reconsider his order for non-reunification pending medical results of the babies. And so we're hoping to raise money to help support Corey and Diana to get some of this testing done. And if, if we're successful in that and sooner rather than later, um, we're going to have those results. And so our hope is that um, the test results will, will, will yield in our favor and that Corey and Diana will, will get their babies back, but we're still having to fight the potential for Corey um, for his potential felony indictment. So we're, we're having to raise money to help them with their okay, attorney well, fees there. Where can people go to help the, with the fundraising for the testing? And I can't believe the state won't do, won't pay for it. The state took the kids. They should have to pay for it. Yeah. And they, and they might end up doing that, but we're going to try to secure money just in case they don't. So we're, our, sure. our effort is to try to secure money. If, and if, if, if the state ends up paying for the testing of the babies, then they're going to have money. Then Corey and Dino have money for, for their experts um, come next, next court hearing. So if uh, your viewers want to go to uh, youarethepower.net slash Sullivan, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a landing page specifically for them. So it's going to have the email templates for your viewers. Plus, it's going to have ways that you can contribute financially to help support Corey and Diana. All right, let's see. Here we go. All right, I will drop that in the chat. And it looks like there's links here for um, to donate right here. Okay, is, perfect. Yes. All right. Help the Sullivans here. Here you go, chat. Um, because this is insane. This is so insane. I, I I feel like the people in power are malicious and stupid, and that's a really bad co combination. Just a <laughs> Just a really bad combination to be malicious and stupid. I felt that way about Sally Smith and about, I mean, it, it almost feels like, like in Sally Smith's case, she really doesn't like other doctors or other people 
who are smarter than she is. She wants to be the smartest person in the room. We have a lot of that syndrome going around. It bothers me greatly that so many of these cases start with birth trauma that is not recognized by these pediatricians afterwards. Uh, Greg Anderson and the Anderson Law Firm is involved in a lawsuit right now for the Kushner family uh, that had a run-in with Sally Smith. And same thing, birth injury. And the birth injury is being, you know, falsely diagnosed as child abuse. It's like, what? what just look at the records. It's not that hard. Yeah. It sounds to me like the Sullivan family has extensive records about the baby's condition before birth and after birth in the 42 days in the NICU. I'm sorry, but my head is swimming at why does the judge need anything <laughs> else other than those records right there? Do you, do you know what Dr. Barbara Knox accused Corey of doing? Oh, I'd love to know. Dr. Barbara Knox said that it was her opinion that Corey drop kicked baby Amelia. What? Like a football? Correct. And, and please understand, Megan, that at the time, uh, Amelia <laughs> weighed less than seven pounds. Oh, right? my word. That was, that was okay, what she said. Okay, that's a cartoon. Yes, that it is an absolute. doesn't happen in real life. No one no. is drop kicking a baby, an no. infant baby. On what, on what evidence? Zero, Megan. Did she say that this could have happened? Speculation only. Spe speculation. And, and you only. know, Ryan, the sad part, sad part is, you. It's that is that is the entire burden of evidence that most of these cases gone wrong is hinged on. Yes. You know, it was it was mere opinion from Sally Smith that really torpedoed uh, Stephanie Spurgeon. It was mere opinion that torpedoed Beata and Maya Kowalski, right? I mean, there's, if, if I want to make an argument, should I not at least show the labs that support it, the x-rays that support it, the, the clinical findings that support it, but how in the world do you support an allegation that a dad with other kids that are healthy, that a dad would drop kick an infant and especially an infant that has already. And 42 days in the NICU. Bought this is some insane. fights, right? Yeah. Why, you know, oh and Corey, God. Corey was in that hospital every day with baby Amelia because, yeah. because Diana was at home taking care of two other children. And so this is a father who had given up his his livelihood, given up his life for his babies, and then yeah. he, and then you have a doctor accusing him of of, of drop kicking, uh, a, a, you know, a five or six it's pound insane. baby. It's, it's it insane. absolutely blows my. I, I just I don't understand how there a, how a, a cap is allowed to say something like that and then not support and then just not support. Ryan, my. I can't watch programs like ER, yeah. Grey's Anatomy. I can't watch it because it's just so far beyond reality, right? Reality. Yeah. My wife loves watching those programs, right? And if if some of the anecdotes that you have shared, some of the details of these cases that you have shared today were written into those scripts, I would make her stop watching. Yeah. Because it was just so far So ridiculous. It is. I, it, it, it blows my mind, Dr. Joe. I, it, yeah. If, if I would have read this in a book, I, I would have said, okay, this is this is fiction. This is nonfiction. Like what For I'm sure. reading is fiction, right? You would have put the book down and moved on to something. And like, yeah. What is with the judge? What is with a judge who sits and listens to a woman say that this baby was drop kicked? What is with the judge? And the judge doesn't go, excuse me, wait, what? What what evidence <laughs> what what evidence do you have for that? Like drop drop kicks. That's pretty specific. Yep. Like you, they really you know, just Megan, believe when, these people. Like when when my son was little, his his attention was less than optimal. Let's just say that. And his nickname around our our house was Wait What? Wait, wait What? what? <laughs> 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 Man, and yeah, the judge right. rode the short bus for sure. Like <laughs> this judge is it should be taken out back and whipped. I mean, they're, yeah. they're for just being for not listening. Did you not hear what was said in your courtroom, yeah. and you just allow that to, to just go forward? 
Juvenile court judges in Georgia are not elected. They're appointed by the chief superior court judge of the circuit. So these judges answer to no one. They don't answer to the electorate. They don't answer to the voters. They're, they're appointed positions. And like some of these judges have been on the bench for decades, just absolute decades. Some of these judges go out and hang out with DFAX personnel. They go play golf together. They go barbecue. And, um, and so mm-hmm. it's, it, the deck is stacked before um, an innocent uh, a family walks into a courtroom in juvenile court. Yeah. Irish Rover, wouldn't an infant that small be unalive if they were drop kicked? One would think. One, wouldn't one there would at think. least, at the very least, Megan, wouldn't there be bruising? Wouldn't there be Head injuries? trauma? How about head right? trauma? How about, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, this is insane. This is insane. This woman is insane. And and her past history, believe me, folks, her past history shows that she is, uh, you know, not someone to be trusted with allegations of child abuse. Sometimes I wonder, like, what I want to put all of these child abuse doctors, I want to put them on a reality show where they are... Uh, where they have to get psychological care and we get to see it happen and find out what is your major malfunction that you like, let's get to the bottom of it. Let's dig down deep. Were you abused as a child? Were you dropped on your head as a child? What were, what are the, what are the, what comes into making a person like this where they see abuse around every corner, you know, drop kicking a baby. What kind of imagination do you have to have? For this to be the first thing that comes out of your mouth, you know, Megan, I, uh, it, it, I'm, I'm very, I'm very blessed to have you as a guest uh, appearing on on my program later tonight at six o'clock <laughs> Eastern, and in the and in the promo for it, I, I, this is a quote: "You never have to wait long before hearing how Megan candidly feels about a situation, <laughs> and especially when it involves government actions which disrupt family relationships under questionable circumstances." Thank you for proving me right. <laughs> no lies detected. That is true. No. No, true, true. True story, Megan. True story. Oh, so true. Oh my God. But I tell you, these people, I, I just can't even believe that these are the people in charge of us. I can't. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I feel like, wow, we have really screwed up. We've screwed up somewhere along the way. We need to, everybody go back, go back, make some different choices and let's try this again. And, and that's one of the things, that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited about, you know, meeting with you today, Ryan, talking with Spike tonight is, you know, you are the power is, has actually made a difference. And I know that Huge. you've made a tiny fraction of the difference that you want to make, but you have made you, you, David, have actually thrown the slingshot and made contact, right? You haven't knocked out Goliath yet, but you mm-hmm. but, but your organization and your leadership has started to make an impact. And that's why I'm so excited about talking with you today and Spike tonight. I appreciate that, Dr. Joe. Thank you so much. I want to point yeah. out too um, that on the site, I'm going to I'm going to put this back in the chat where the the Sullivan site, and I'm going to pin it to the top. This is where the letters are and the templates, if you want, and the contact information. Um, but I want to point out that you do not have to be a citizen of Georgia to write a letter. You just need to change it to say, "I'm yeah. actually from." I'm from Colorado, yes. but I'm watching what you're doing. And I, I'm from Australia. I'm watching what you're doing. And believe me, it actually makes an impact when my viewers from around the world email these people and say, I'm in the UK. And I think what you're doing here is terrible. Um, so don't don't feel like you have to be a resident of Georgia to make these, to, to send emails. You don't. Yeah, you do not. You do not. And as a matter of fact, Dr. Joanne Megan, um, in the Hernandez case and in the Sullivan case, in open court, on the record, um, DFACS personnel has actually, um, they've actually complained about mm-hmm. You Are The Power. They've complained about um, our email campaigns and our social media campaigns because they feel like they were being inundated with um, emails um, and they didn't they didn't deserve that 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 email treatment. And so it's, it's gratifying to know that the work that we are doing is impacting uh, their lives and it's impacting, when I say their lives, I mean impacting you know, the lives of the people that we're trying to help. And then it's also 
calling to task these these government officials for their for their bad behavior. And so I, I think it's rewarding to when I hear them complain that I receive 500 emails telling me I'm wrong. I receive, you know, like that's that's great. That's the way it should work. That's exactly and, and, what and we Ryan, wanted. Doesn't their response to those emails suggest to you that there's a lot of layers to that onion to be <laughs> peeled, right? Yeah, you're absolutely Ooh, right, Dr. Joe. You are absolutely right. We're just we need, we're just touching the surface here. We need Megan to start pouring the uh, the adult beverages and really get into analyzing <laughs> that reaction. Yeah, yeah. How Holy how dare moly. the how dare the citizens or the electorate, uh, the electoral uh, members of society, reach out to their elected officials, their appointed officials, and call them to task? How dare we have the gumption to, nah. to say, hey, you're you're doing something wrong. You should probably reconsider your course. They of really hate that, but that's what our 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 entire country is founded on: the people's right to have a voice <laughs> and to address our, re, our redress for grievances. And that's what we're for doing. Sure. And that's and we're not going to stop. We're not going to stop doing that. In fact, we're going to start it up again. We're going to we're going to rev up the engines, folks, because this has to this has to stop. We have two two new families now, the Tims and the Sullivans, who are both being railroaded by this by child abuse doctors in Georgia and Florida. And it has to stop. We, we cannot allow this to continue because if it can happen to them, it can happen to you. It can happen to your grandchildren. It can happen to anyone. We've got to say enough is enough. This country is off the rails when it comes to parental rights lately, whether it's your kids and what they're learning in school, or it's what, you know, you, you're you allowed to feed them, or you're allowed to do this with them and allowed to do that. Well, you know, it's time to tell the government, back off of my parental rights. I have a right to raise my child in any religion I see fit. I have the right to discipline my child. I have the right to take my child to different specialists without you calling it doctor shopping. And I don't want you in my life. You're not allowed in my life, period. The government's not allowed unless there's some actual law breaking that they can find, but they haven't found it or they would have indicted already. It's ridiculous. This, this idea that they have four years to indict, that might be something also that we need to contact Georgia legislature about. Four years is too long for them to, st to dig up information and make a case against you. That's way too long. They shouldn't even be able to arrest you if they can't indict you. Like, enough. Yeah, Wheezy Bob, thank you. Fuck off, government. Sorry, we've reached the part in the program where my mouth has decided it's it, <laughs> we're, the cursy words are coming out. It's it's hey, just Megan, one of yeah. excuse me, one of one of your one of your audience members just uh suggested a link and I just Googled it. It said it said Google X CPS worker tells all. Hmm. And it and it looks like a YouTube from a couple of years back. It only had forty nine thousand views, but um uh the comments are pretty pretty overwhelming. I think I've I think I now one, know what I'm gonna be that is that the one with the 49,000 views? Uh, that's the one I just pulled up. It was posted 11 years ago. There's another one that has had like 170,000 views that seems to be on the same topic. But uh, oh, interesting. Um, but I thought was interesting was the first comment was, as a former foster parent, I can tell you that the system is seriously flawed. Oh yeah, I, I've I've spoken yeah. to many people who've had in, you know experience with the system, and it's it's. It's no, it's no good. For instance, yeah. for instance, we are currently covering a story here on this channel that started out as all fun and games because uh, it was a funny case in Florida with a judge who's he, we call him the Judge Grudge. He is very <laughs> poorly behaved on this on the bench. I mean, like the one of the most poorly behaved judges you've ever seen. He's very full of himself. He loves to scream at an attorney that he really doesn't like. And he's very biased and he shows it. So when we started covering the case, it was really just to make fun of this judge and how bad he is and just, you know, give him a taste of, you know, taking him down a peg. Well, then I realized as we're going through this case that there's a child involved in this crazy case in Florida where this woman has been harassing a YouTuber, Jeremy Hales, and she's accusing him of cyber stalking her. But he, she's accusing him of that because he ha is her neighbor and he's been putting up on YouTube that she's got this little girl she's adopted who is four years old now, but she's had her since she was a baby. And they're living in a shed, a literal shed in the Florida heat. 
with no running water and a bucket to poop in, like in a shed on this property wow. full of trash and turtles. We call it turtle purgatory. It's, it's a disgusting place. It's already been written up by Fish and Game. These people, D, the DCF in Florida has been out there 13 times, 13 times and have done nothing, nothing about a four-year-old with allegedly medical problems. This woman says she has medical problems living in a shed with no air conditioning, no running water, no hygiene, and they're doing nothing about it. And yet we have these cases with completely innocent parents and they're jumping all over themselves to take these kids away. Why do we see this? This, this why does this keep happening? I'm, I'm at a loss. Why is no one competent? Yeah, yeah it's, it, it's unfortunate. I mean, Megan, um, the, the other cases that we're vetting here, right? The other cases that you are the powers looking at here in Georgia specifically, I could just cut and paste the parent's name and, and the, the factual statements involved. They remain the same. I could literally just remove parents and county names and, and they're all the same. Um, I was speaking with um, a lady, a friend of mine who um, is over a DFAX. Uh, she actually is an oversight committee over a DFAX oversight committee in, in Metro Atlanta. And she told me that it's not uncommon for these offices, for these DFAX offices to have complete turnover every six to eight months. And wow. so if you're, if you're in an environment like that where you don't have the manpower or you don't have the resources or the capable personnel to fully vet these cases and to fully investigate these cases, the default position has to be let's just seize the children and figure it out later. Um, because you're spending so much time training these new employees and so much time on this on this turnover. It's, it's unbelievable. I, I guess that that makes sense. I guess that it makes sense in some way, but at the same time too, it's like, well, why is the turnover so high? Why is that? Right. Why, why do we have such a hard time keeping people on a case? And then once the turnover is so high and you keep getting a different social worker on each case, that's how stuff falls between the tracks. That that's how you, you don't, you lose track of these cases. Well, Georgia has over 11,000 children in, in defects, care right now and they have less than 5,000 foster homes foster parent homes for these children so there's 11,000 children and there's a little over maybe 47 or 4,800 homes that could take these children and so you know defects is 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 broken like it's non-functional at this point yeah I mean you have wow. four four percent Megan four four to five percent of the children in states care right now um, are reported as receiving maltreatment while in care, four to five percent. So four to five percent of those 11,000 children are not receiving the proper care while they're in state's custody. I mean, I don't know about I don't know about you guys, but I wouldn't allow my family to get on a plane if I knew there was a four or five percent chance that it was going to crash. But yet right. DFAX is taking these children left and right and they're seizing these children left and right. And they they don't have any place to, to, to put them once they have them or when they do put them someplace. They're, they're it's getting dangerous. Abused. Yeah, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. and, and Ryan, Kimmy's how many people point. work within the defects system? You know, just do the math. If there's 500, I mean, just do the math in a 40 hour work week. How yeah. much time does it does each case get on a recurring basis? I mean, no wonder they're just trying to move paper from one pile to the next, they especially are. if there's a 30, 50, 100 percent turnover rate. Right. It's I've got. Um, copies of emails, uh, Dr. Joe and Megan from DFAX em, uh, employees that were sent to me. I've got probably 40 pages of emails where uh, DFAX personnel are literally just shopping children around. I mean, they're just sending desperate emails out saying, hey, I've got this, you know, uh, two kids in this county and can you take them for a night? And if you do, we'll give you an extra $150. We don't want them sleeping in a hotel. We don't want them having to sleep in the DFAX office. Yeah, you know, they're putting them in offices, by the way. And there's a yeah. lawsuit that I covered a while ago uh, where one of the children they let sleep in an office was uh, essayed in the office. Oh, and because they're, they're leaving these kids in an office overnight, there's janitorial staff, there's people coming and going. It is outrageous. And they say they're the safe ones to have 
kids with, let, put the kids with? No, no, they're not. And speaking of, Kim A just said, how many are missing? Georgia defects just had a huge scandal, and that's why they're being investigated by Senator Ossoff, because they're missing over 1,700 children from the foster care system. 1,700 children are missing. Yeah. That's true, and it's it's not like data that was made up. It's it's, it's from the Center for National the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, um, in and around the time of the pandemic has has reported that I mean, it's, it's almost eighteen hundred children went missing while in while in states care while in defects care. And whether it's runaways or they literally just misplaced these kids doesn't matter to me. They're supposed to be the ones responsible for them, and they are supposed to know where they are. They're supposed to be keeping them safe. That's what our tax dollars pay for, and that is not what's happening. Meanwhile, they're taking children out of safe homes and putting them into unsafe places in these in cases like what we're covering here, and it has to stop. It's obviously not every case. Obviously, it's not every social worker. Uh, and I always get the people who, you know, will say that, and I get that. But of course, we don't cover the stories here that turn out well, do we? Because it doesn't, there's no reason to. When the system works, well, good, we're happy. What we're, what we're not happy with, though, is targeting innocent families, using hospitals and doctors to do that, and, and not having a reasonable outlook towards these cases to say, we need to review each and every case to make sure we didn't violate somebody's constitutional rights. Instead of doing that, they're just like, well, we took them, so we're just gonna go with it. We're just gonna, we're just gonna keep going because you know, it's too late now, too hard to go back and figure it all out. It doesn't seem like the right, right, right way to reach their ambition of. Uh, if you look at the Defects website, they're committed to quote, safe children, strengthened families, and stronger communities. I'd say they're over three, right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And and again, listen, it's a thankless job and it doesn't pay well. And, uh, you know, and, and maybe that's why there's huge turnover and, you know, the burnout alone, my God, the listen, look at the emotion that just discussing these three cases has raised in, in, uh, in the three of us. And we're yeah. a, a good arm's length or 10 away from the actual situation. Ryan being the exception, he's closer than most, but, you know, how emotional must it be on these probably, I'm not saying minimum wage, but minimally compensated frontline workers that are tasked with all of this and the numbers are overwhelming. So I'm not saying it's an easy situation to be in, but Megan, to your point, isn't it time that we really consider burning the ships and starting from scratch? Yes. Yes. And also I think personally, I mean, we can say they're overworked and underpaid and all of that. But one thing I know for a fact by watching Sean McMillan's channel and the depositions is that like, for instance, last night I was watching one and the supervisor was being um, interviewed, was being deposed about what was done to Rachel Bruno's family. And we have to talk about their training because you know, the Fourth Amendment has been in writing since 1789. And yet these these caseworkers in Orange County were not trained on the Fourth Amendment until 2010, literally 2010. That's when they were trained that you cannot take a child without a warrant. You, you want to hear her say it? Because it's kind of amazing. Am I correct that the seriousness of an injury to the child does not itself create exigent circumstances if the risk of future harm is not immediate. That's correct. Okay. Do you remember when you first learned that? I believe that was in that warrant training in 2010. Mm -hmm. 2010. That was in the warrant training in 2010. And the only reason why they had that warrant training in Orange County was because Sean McMillan had successfully sued them over and over again. And they kept losing in court because they didn't they didn't know they weren't supposed to take kids without a warrant. Literally, they had no idea. 1789, folks, the Fourth Amendment has literally been in writing and, and ratified since 1789. But we have social workers 
who can't even tell you what the Fourth Amendment is. And she's a supervisor. She's a supervisor. Let me show you this one because this one about had me fall out of my chair. We can do that. Um, which is I, I have to remind, be reminded of what the Fourth Amendment is. I always confuse the Fourth and Fourteenth. Okay. We can do that. Oh, my God, lady. You're a supervisor. You should know what the Fourth Amendment is and what the 14th Amendment is because those are the two amendments, really the major two amendments that, that you are required to know and make sure you protect. These people take an oath to the Constitution and they can't even tell you what's in it. This is what we're dealing with. And this woman is a supervisor. She was with Orange County for years and years and years, a supervisor. So if the supervisors don't know, I can guarantee you that the social workers don't know and there no one cares to tell them. There's another clip from this deposition. This is why I watch these. Like I, I'm telling you, these these depositions kill me. Um, where's the first one? She, no, maybe it's a third one. There's another one where she talks about, well, maybe I didn't post it. I thought I did. Oh yeah, here. Okay, so we know that super that uh, that social workers will lie and do all sorts of things in reports. You know, we know that they do this. We've seen it in the Kowalski case. We've seen it in uh, the Kushner case. There's now in Sean McMillan's case is the Bruno case. They lied in these in their reports to the judge. They misrepresented facts to the judge. We know this happens all the time. She's about to be asked. Well, she's a supervisor. You must have heard of this. Uh, have you ever disciplined anyone for this action, for, for lying? Okay. Am I also correct that you've never in your entire career as a supervisor with County of Orange disciplined one of your workers, the people you supervise, for making untrue statements in court reports? No, I haven't done that. Okay. Have you ever heard of anybody with your agency ever having been disciplined for that sort of behavior? It sounds familiar. I couldn't. <laughs> it sounds familiar. Okay. Yeah. Sounds so familiar. what about uh, unwarranted seizures of children? Have you ever even heard of somebody in your agency being disciplined in any way whatsoever for seizing a child? That's my favorite look on her face right here. Well, let's <laughs> see. Hmm, really digging deep. Have I ever heard of anyone being... was? Uh, um, without first getting a warrant where there was no immediate danger to the child's health. I'm not aware of that. Okay. Isn't nope. that the same look that the uh, that the lover had when asked if he ever went to a cabin with Bonnie Whitt Willis? <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> I mean, this is what we're dealing with. So, I mean, there's a part of me, and you can watch Sean's depositions over and over and over again, and you will find the same thing. You'll find these same answers in different cases with different yeah. social workers. It's all the same. No, we've never, we've never, no, you know what? They don't even, not only do they not discipline them, they promote them. Mm -hmm. They get promoted. They don't get fired. They get promoted. So I guess I have little patience with the, um, Oh, it's a thankless job. They get paid a lot. Like some of these people get paid tons and they're sitting around like this one, not, not doing her job, which is to make sure that her caseworkers are not lying to the judge on these affidavits and on these, on the reports. I just, I'm so annoyed by it. All right, Ryan, I, I appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much uh, for giving me your time and uh, energy. Is there anything else that you want to tell the audience before I let you go? Um, what more can they do? Yes. So Megan, thank you so much for having me on Dr. Joe. Thank you so much for listening, li listening to what I had to say. Uh, I had to say, Megan, if, if your audience, if you don't mind, uh, funneling them towards the, you are the powers website, you know, www.youarethepower.net, um, have them sign up for that free membership and then have them get involved, right? We send out monthly newsletters about, um, cases or causes that were championed in, in all 50 States and they can get involved in those cases. They can help us out. Even for us, uh, help is nothing more. It could be nothing more than just sending an email on our behalf, making a phone call on our behalf, sending in a fax. If you want to send a fax on our behalf, that's how um, our strength is in numbers at this point. And so we just approach everything from that human respect standpoint. 
Uh, Megan, specifically on these cases right now that we're working in Georgia, we're having a difficult time following the money. Um, what I mean by that is we're filing open records requests with various state agencies right now to try to find these contracts between DFACs and these child abuse uh, pediatricians. And our open records requests are continuously getting denied. Um, mm. So if there's any member of your audience who wants to um, get in contact with you or, or if you want to put my email address in the chat, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, if there's somebody that would have some financial, um, have knowledge about the financial uh, background or Yeah, Mark Pinsley. Mark Pinsley. I'm talking to him tomorrow. I'll put okay. you guys in touch because yeah, he's an auditor. He that. knows where to look for it. He knows please where to look. Um, you might actually cons consider going to FOIAing the controller's office. Okay. We'll, because we'll you, do that. you might find somebody um, who will not withhold information there. You're talking about the money guy. And yeah. the, usually in the controller's office, you have somebody who's looking to save money and that might be another option. So I'll, let, I'll put you in touch with Mark too. He can give you maybe some good language to use. Yeah. If you don't mind doing that, just um, if you send me his email, I'll, I'll, res I'll respond out to him. But yeah, I, I can't thank you enough for what you've done uh, for these families. I'm going to continue to do for these families. We're, gonna, we're Like I said, we're vetting five more cases right now here in Georgia alone. Um, mm. And so I, I know that right now this is uh, is systemic of what we have going on here. And I think we're like what Dr. Joe was saying, we're just kind of uh, just just peeling back those onion layers and we're just going to find more and more corruption that the farther that we dig. Or well, you tell me, you let me know if there's anything I can help you with, you know, with investigation, you know, anything that's going, anything you need, you let me know, Ryan, you've got my email. We're in, in contact and I hope to do a, um, an action stream soon on these cases. And I hope you'll come back again. I will. I will absolutely do that, Megan. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. It's a pleasure to meet you, Dr. Joe. That's, that's been fantastic. Thank you for all you're doing, Ryan. You're an amazing gentleman. Yes, sir. Thanks, we, we try. Thank you, guys. Y'all have a great, great rest of the afternoon. You too. Joe, tell me about what's going on on your channel tonight. Well, well, first of all, after two hours of listening to those stories, I feel like I need to take another shower. But uh, <laughs> oh, me too. Oh, my God. I'm all sweaty. I got all sweaty. Oh. I got all ragey. Oh, my gosh. You know, honestly, it's it's just it, it's so heartbreaking to know that the Kowalski's tragedy is not an isolated incident. Mm. It's just, you know, you just, there's, there's just no shortage of horror stories to be told. But, but I, you know, I will tell you my, you know, my audience, um, you know, I call everybody that, that follows the advocates. And, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do is, you know, it's great to I, it's great to talk about it. It's great to complain about it. But what do we actually do about it? And that's one of the things that I really uh, am excited about, you know, uh, talking with Spike tonight, talking with Ryan on your show for the last two hours, you know, they're actually doing something about it and making and like I said, they they've just started to dent the surface, but they're making a difference. So so tonight, um, uh, six o'clock Eastern uh, at CMO Dr. Joe, just like it says under underneath the frame. Um, we'll be talking with you because, again, as you said at the top of the conversation, Megan, you know you've not been following the Tim's case for very long, but you've been following you know child protective services and 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 stories like this. For 20 years, you've dedicated your professional career to this. So, you know, having you on tonight is going to be huge um, as we talk with someone that I just spoke to for the first time uh, today. Uh, we've been swapping messages the last several days, and that's Spike Cohen, who is um, the founder of You Are, the, you, are um, you Know, You Are the Power. And, you know, as I said, his his tweet on x last wednesday stating that the judge in the sullivan's case was recommending non-reunification despite all of the evidence that sh that it should at least raise questions to your point right it should at least raise questions but to go to the 
familial equivalent of the death sentence three months after the 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 case even surfaced and to separate an infant who is growth restricted Mm. and is going to have challenges in life anyway anyway and yeah, they're causing literal brain damage. From... Yeah, they're causing sure, literal brain damage. For sure. This is something sure. that the child will never recover from. And most likely the parents won't ever be able to financially recover from because they're going to yeah. need another couple million dollars to sue these people and overcome immunity yeah. and overcome all this other shit. This is why the Kowalski, the Kowalski Foundation, this is why them getting that money from J Hatch is huge. Because I yeah. know that Maya wants to help families like this to get their justice, to get a legal fund going for these people and i swear to you the reason why jay hatch is doing what they're doing and keeping that money away from her is because they don't want that to happen that's what i think i think that they just don't want other people to be able to fight off these child abuse pediatricians and and fight these hospitals and it's just it's making me sick you are you are so right megan i've spoken with maya i've spoken with kyle i've spoken with jack all of them want to pay it forward and help others because there was nobody to help them in 2017. And, you know, it was only through a, 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 the grace of God that they got in touch with Anderson Glenn Law Firm and, and, and Greg and Jennifer Anderson and and you know got help from amazing people like nick whitney and and samantha lawrence and you know connie and 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 all the all the amazing people that backed up the lawyers that were in the courtroom you know it it really was just an alignment uh that was fortuitous um and so many of us that were involved in the case as expert witnesses did it with no fees um, you know, Scott Richards did not charge for his expert testimony. Um, you know, many of us just got involved because it was the right thing to do, you know, and Megan still one of my favorite, one of my favorite moments, uh, from, you know, discovering law tube was, um, uh, you freezing, uh, a moment in my testimony. And you said, see that guy's face, see that face right there. That is the face of a guy who just realized I'm never going to work in this industry again. <laughs> I remember that. I remember oh thinking, God. holy shit. He may yeah. have just realized that I'm yeah. never going to work in this industry again. No one's ever going to hire me again. No, nope, no. Nope. But you no, know, it's I'm... okay. It's all right because you you did the right thing. And that's, yeah. that's what And you know what? I sleep happen. well at night, Megan. I sleep well at night because I know that. Somebody needed to say it and there was nobody stepping forward. And so, you know, I've been very blessed that, uh, you know, I'm at the end of my career, not the beginning of it. And so, you know, the, the career consequences are not as, as severe as they would have been a couple of years ago. But, uh, um, but you know what, it, it, to, 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 I can't have the same impact on the Sullivan case and the Tim's case and the Hernandez case but I can at least raise awareness about it and, and team up with people like you and with Ryan and with, and with Spike and, and, and make people aware and maybe just get them a little bit angry and a little bit feisty. And, you know, it's like, remember the movie network, you know, get up, stand up, go out to your windows and I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. And we really need to have that kind of a recognition in Tallahassee and, and, and in, wherever the hell Georgia has its capital. I'm blanking on my geography, but uh, I mean, we really need, I think it's Atlanta. Yeah, I don't know. Is it I Atlanta? I think it's Atlanta, but, uh, but you sure. know, the bottom line is that, you know, we need to have this kind of awakening in the, in the political hallways, not just in, just not, not just on law, law two, but tonight we're going to have you, we're going to have, uh, we're going to have Spike and we're going to talk about, the Sullivan case in particular, but also talk about the Tims and the and the Hernandez cases because three cases with the that many similarities and that many common characters and that that little bit of of corroborating evidence that that's a pattern now, right? So yes, you know, 
But what do no, we do? No, it's about definitely it? a pattern. It's definitely a yeah. pattern. I don't know. I don't know, but we got to do something. I got to get over to locals. Joe, there's some questions for you. Ari Rose yeah. on locals uh, says Tell Dr. Joe, my six kids and I were blessed to be born and raised in the IHC healthcare system in Utah. I loved Excellent. his spirit and attitude so much the first time he took the stand that I knew he had some association before he even said it. God bless him for being someone who desires and appreciates that type of patient center care. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. And Duncan Idaho uh, says, I think the thing which precipitates seeing abuse around every corner is just the power. If it's someone's job to find and prosecute child abuse, and they are given unfettered, unchecked power to do so because it's easy, because it's a relief to us when we can relinquish our vigilance to a third party, they will find it every time and they won't ever stop or get smaller. Oh, God, that's and, terrifying. And you know what? And I, and I want to let Duncan know that one of the things that Spike will be speaking about tonight specifically is the motivation. What do, what do hospitals like J Hatch or Wolfson or Children's of Atlanta, what's in it for them? What's in it for the doctors? You know, the, the, like Deborah Osario Jensen and Barbara Knox and Valeria Brown, you know, what's in it for them? Why are they motivated? to, you know, put opinions out there with absolutely no structure behind them. That's kind of risky to do, but why are they doing it? So we'll be discussing <laughs> that specifically. drop picked an right. infant. Okay, drop right. picking an infant is so out there. Right. I can't even, I can't. Uh, Red yeah. Storm, thanks for the tip on local, says, keep covering these cases. These people are doing such a disservice to those children who truly need help and a complete detriment to those who don't. This is evil. I agree with you. It is. Duncan Idaho, thanks for the uh, tip on local, says, at some point, we forgot that everything which was built for us by the blood and sweat of our ancestors needs constant input and it's hard work and requires our attention and involvement. Just like marriage, just like raising a child, just like any business or relationship or any human endeavor, it tends to a state of chaos and decay when left alone. Anyway, thanks, Megan. Thanks, Duncan. That is so, he's so full of good things to say, this yeah. man. I'm telling yeah. you, he just, he really is. And I just think it's true. We, we've, it is our fault. It's our fault uh, for leaving it alone. And we're just not going to do that anymore. We're not, we're, we're beyond that. We're not going to do that anymore. We're standing and if up I'm not mistaken, people. his earlier quote from Thomas Jefferson was something that Jefferson said when he was 29 years old. Isn't that something? Right. I'm telling you, our founders were just built of a different breed than for sure. Than for sure. most of us these days. Hallie P, thanks for the super chat. Says these clowns will make parents not seek. Uh, oh, care, Hallie. care. Yeah, I know. Hundred percent. There have been times when I have not sought care because I was concerned about how I would be perceived. Um, and yeah. in fact, at one point I had had a, um, an EEG schedule. What, what do they call the brain? The ones for yeah. seizures. EEG. EEG. Yeah. I had an EEG scheduled for my middle child because I didn't know what was going on with her. And I thought she might be having absence seizures, but I asked for it. And I was right in the middle of the Cynthia Absug case, and they used <laughs> EEGs against yep. her as yep. evidence that she abused her kid. And I called the doctor and I was like, you know what? I think we should just cancel it because you have said you think it's fine and I'm going to agree with you. How about that? How about we do that? Yeah. Is that OK? And he was like, yeah, that's fine. It's fine if you don't want to. I'm like, OK, I think I think everything's fine. You know, so I never did. Yeah. I never yeah. found out. Uh, and yeah. I don't know. Shelly Hall, thanks for the super chat, says, why do they have to pay a child, child support, support if child the grandmother support. has them? Uh, because the state, the ch you think the child support's going to grandma? Oh, I got news <laughs> for you, you sweet summer child. That child support is going to the state, and the state claims that they use it to take care of the child. But, of course, they're getting federal funds and state funds to do that, too. So you see what's happening? It's going to the director's budget. That's what, where it's going. It's a bunch of garbage. Tracy Fagan, thanks for the super chat. The difference between God and doctors is God doesn't think he's a doctor. Sorry, Dr. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> he can take a joke. It's fine. Um, let's see. And Sarah Adams, since when do child abusers take their kids to the doctor? That's a, that's a question that should be yeah, asked. Right. 
right? Yeah. Like if you did just drop kick your kid, like, cause you're that kind of monster, you're going to pick up the kid and take it to the hospital. I don't think so. Right. Right. Oh, good Lord. All right. So six o'clock tonight, I think yep. I've got about an hour before I have to go pick up a kid. Um, okay. So I'll be there for the first hour. That'd be awesome. And I'm, I'm, I'm really, really excited. looking forward. I'm looking forward to meeting um, Spike Cohen because I've been yeah. like following what he's been doing and, you know, trying to help out with these cases that he's uncovered. And he, he's doing an amazing thing. And I'm so excited. Joe, I'm telling you, over all the time I've done this, I have not found one organization that has been as effective as his. So yeah. all your prayers, folks, towards this organization, prayers and support, because if I know one thing, it's this the government does not like effective people mm -hmm. and 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 he's going to be up against a lot of of problems because of how effective they are they really are um but i'm 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 also so thrilled to be connected with them because i do feel like we're moving forward and then getting all these other players together with you with them and you know once the kowalskis get their money hopefully we can help we can everyone get yeah. together and help these parents to go after these people and i mean teach them a lesson this is the kind of thing that needs to happen Georgia needs to be sued. The pants need to be sued off of Georgia. Sue the <laughs> pants off of Georgia and win, and this stuff will stop happening. For instance, perfect example, Sean McMillan sued Orange County so many times that they, that's why that woman went to that 2010 training on warrants. That's how, that's how effective he was. They got the entire state of California to institute new warrant rules wow. and to train every single social worker in warrants. So they're not taking kids without warrants anymore in California because of Sean McMillan and his uh, team and the work that they did there. So it, lawsuits really do work. Yeah. So, and isn't right, that sad that that's what it takes? But It does. Yeah. It does. But I'm going to let you go. And, uh, All right, kiddo few things to do to catch up the the crowd here on what's going on here but uh, i'm gonna let you go and thank you so much for being here and i'll see you tonight at six i'll see you and hopefully i'll see some of the uh members of the fox den uh yep. it's always a blast coming over here so uh thank you so much megan i'll see you at six tonight okay everybody go subscribe to dr joe corcoran i put his link in the chat go and do that now see you later joe thanks a bunch take care you too all right. Now, what time is it? It's 1.30. My kid locked my keys in the car. This is something I have to go take care of. I have to go and give her keys, extra keys. Uh, but I have some time before school's out. So here's what I was thinking we would do. Oh, for one, Fox 10 Daily is up today. It's a new broadcast. Uh, it was up at 8 a.m. because I'm getting better at this. So Go and make sure that you are subscribed and following Fox Den Daily. And that is on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, anywhere you find your podcasts uh, or is Fox Den Daily. And I want you to go and do that because I am I'm doing basically recaps of what's happening in the law tube sphere and crime and all that stuff that we're all interested in. And it's a short little 25 minute podcast you can listen to when you're driving or whatever. And I want you to go in and make sure that you are subscribed to Fox Den Daily and leave it a review. Be honest. Uh, tell me if you like it. I would love to hear that. OK, here's what I want to do right now. Um, hold please while I pull up what I need to on my screen. Okay. Those of you who are new to this program and new to this channel, because you found me with what the hails and, uh, you know, I got a lot of new subscribers. We're almost at 50,000. Please do hit that subscribe. But I do always warn you the 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 great disappointing will happen at some point and people will rage quit. So I wanted to show you a rage quitter, a recent rage quitter that I, I laughed at and I, I just think is hilarious. All right, I need my Reddit voice for this. Your comments about the corruption in the Georgia DA's office made me mad. Name that corruption. Like the lies regularly told on your favorite TV channel, Fox.
Fox Broadcasting. Your opinion of the supposed corruption is without basis. One of the reasons I followed what the hails is because of their honesty. Your dishonesty is why I unsubscribed from your channel. I will not support or defend your dishonesty and the fact that a couple people working in the same office had a romantic relationship is not a sign of corruption. It's a sign of people being people. Shame on you, Megan Fox. This exposure for you through the What the Hails dilemma may have gained you a few subscribers, but your own words have shown what a biased and dishonest person you are. <laughs> well, well, well. That's a mouthful. That is a mouthful right there. Um, they fell in love. Fanny and Nathan Wade, they just fell in love, you know? You know, it, it, never mind, never mind that, well. She lied. New button. She lied. Never mind that she lied under oath. And so did Nathan Wade. That's not corruption. That's not corruption. It's happening with Harper says, ha ha, cry harder. <laughs> Is there punctuation? Not much. Not much. Um. It's the trash taking itself out. Listen, you guys do not have to agree with me on any of my commentary about, you know, anything political, really. I don't require that you agree with me. I just require that you tolerate it or mute it until it's over and then we move on to other things. Um, but I mean, I do find it strange if you don't see the corruption in the Fannie Willis, Nathan Wade thing. I mean, even the judge saw it. The judge in his decision was like, She's super unprofessional and he lied under oath. I don't know how he figured that only one of them lied under oath when they were both telling the same story. I don't know how that works, but I think the other word for it is corruption. It could be wrong. But I do also want to tell you that if there's a Republican involved in corruption, I want to talk about that too. And I'm going to. Governor Kemp's on my list. Like that dude, there's a problem with him. You will never run into, oh, you will never she hear me hold back on a Republican who's involved in corruption. Never. You know why? I hold Republicans to a higher standard because I think on most things that they're on in the right. But when they don't, believe me, I will chase after them. I will. Uh, and 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 that and I have. In fact, a lot of times on PJ Media. The audience over there is usually mad at me because they say that I'm a traitor because I will write bad things about Republicans when they do bad things. Like, for instance, I just wrote about Ron DeSantis being involved in this Florida nightmare uh, covering up for the Ezels. Uh, you know, the tanning salon guy, the tanning salon here, this guy. Remember this guy, the tanning salon guy. So you got an ex prosecutor who's filming a woman at a tanning salon with his phone and he gets like two governors and the entire eighth circuit to cover up for him. Yeah. I'm not down with that. And I don't care what party you're with. I'm going to expose it, whether it's Ron DeSantis or, or anybody else. I don't care. So trust me, if I find corruption anywhere, I find it, I'm going to tell you about it. I hate politics. I hate them. I hate all politicians. I've taken the black pill folks. No red pill here. I'm on the, I'm in the black pill crew. I think they all suck. And um, I think that's where journalism should start. We should start with the, with the uh, knowledge that all politicians are liars. All of them are lying to you and start from there. That's where I start from. And Fannie Willis is a politician. She ran on going after Donald Trump and then she did it. Uh, Tammy Fayette says, you look really good, Megan. Yeah, I put makeup on today. Look, I did my eye makeup. Did I do it okay? I don't know. I'm very bad at doing eye makeup because I have these hooded eyes and I don't always get it right. But maybe today it looks all right. I sometimes feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe we should do an eye makeup stream where you guys send me different looks you want me to try. That would be fun. Let's do that on Locals. I should tell you about my hair. No, we're not doing that right now. Although you guys, you guys, I'm not even making medium wage today. 
but I'm not complaining because it's an important topic. So I can't really complain. And I don't want you to, I don't want you to send me the grocery money. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. But we've go, been going for two and a half hours and we're at $34.98. What is that? An hour. Oh Lord, that's bad. <laughs> that's bad, folks. <laughs> what is it? Megan can't do math in her head. Uh, 2.5. That's, well, it's less than minimum wage. It's not medium wage. It's $13 an hour. $13.99 an hour. Yeah. Can we send you the corn money? What corn money? What's corn money? I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's all right. I, I'm not going to shame you today. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna wait for it. By the way, so okay, what else is happening this week? This is what I wanted to tell you. So I'm gonna be on with Tug on my channel tomorrow night. Tomorrow during the day, and I don't know what we're talking about yet. Tug and I are always working on something. It'll be something good. Um, so tomorrow night at like 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, put it in your calendar, my channel, me and Tug. Tomorrow, 11 a.m., I'm having Mark Pinsley on uh, from Lehigh Valley. Lehigh Valley uh, with the Dr child abuse doctor, Deborah Serio Jensen. We're going to talk about the lawsuit that's going on there. Wednesday, I feel like something's happening on Wednesday. Oh yeah. Wednesday night, I'm going to be on with, quite frankly, uh, he is having me on. We are probably going to talk about the tonsil twins case, I'm thinking, and then we'll probably get into what the hails as well. Uh, quite frankly, he has a really great show. If you are not subscribed to him, go do that on YouTube. I'll be on with him. It's, I think he starts around 7 p.m. So that's Wednesday night. And then when, do I have a plan for Wednesday during the day? I feel like I do. And I can't remember what it is. Oh, I put it in my calendar. Ha ha. Look at me being all on top of my shit. All right. Wednesday. Ah, Broken Baker. Wednesday, Broken Baker is going to be here at 11. We are going to go over the Karen Reed case because he's been covering that. And there's been a ton going on there. We're going to do that. And then probably Thursday during the day, I think we're going to play the new What the Hales, uh, the uh, judge, the judge grudge, his other case that I have from 2021 with Mark Feather and Silverman uh, and the judge. So we're going to see if, if he behaves any differently in another hearing. I've got that hearing and uh, that's going to come up probably this Thursday. And we'll read the documents in that case as well. Oh, God bless you, Jill, with the 20. Jill Max Martinez bringing it up to medium wage says the law that just passed today or this week that says words from his song cannot be used against. You should be told to Jeremy and George. Judge DeThomasis may have to take the CPO off because of this new ruling. Oh, yeah, right. Because wasn't it his turtle song? There's a hole in the, in the there's a turtle in the hole across the street in the turtle purgatory. <laughs> And it's really bad or whatever it was. Remember that song? That's funny. That's funny. Hey, MG, you want to come on with me on Thursday to, to watch the new Judge DeThomas' uh, hearing that I have? Should be fun. If you have time, come hang out. All right. Since we are on the topic, though, of child abuse doctors, I kind of want to pull up this lawsuit that I just happen to be reading that involves Dr. Knox, right? And just read a little bit of it so, to give you just because you just won't even believe this. You won't even believe that I was just reading this. I had no idea that she was connected in any way to any of the cases that You Are the Power is researching. And check it out. Let's pull this up. Uh... <laughs> Puzzled Puzzler says, how come you didn't claim the fifth when caught stealing DUI's chats? Well, because I'm medium smart and it took me, it, it took me a while to think of what I was going to say and I should have pled the fifth. That would have been hilarious. Uh, QB in SB, thanks to the Super Chat, says, enjoy being here. You always have interesting content. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. 
Rogue Mama, thanks to the Super Chat, says Fanny broke state ethics and public contracting. Oh, she broke all sorts of laws. And, and the, the fact that she got away with it just burns me. All right, let's look at this document, you guys, because this is the filing in Alaska. And I, I emailed the lawyer in the case uh, today um, and I, this morning to ask him, like, hey, uh, what is the status of this? And like, where are we at? So what I found out, I looked at the case. The case docket is insane with this case. So this is Justin Acker and Emily Acker and John Doe and Jane Doe v. Providence Health and Services and Barbara Knox and Bryant Skinner and Providence Alaska Medical Center. So this, <laughs> MG Law says, you could have said your anxiety was through the roof. <laughs> anxiety over the roof. Michelle, thank you for the $50 cash app. You are amazing. Aw, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, She said, wait, there was a message on there too. Hold on. Let me make sure I read it. Mm. Michelle says, for you, for you do amazing work, even for a medium smart lady. Aw, thank you. Is today St. Patrick's Day? Did I miss St. Patrick's Day? It. Why is my cash app all green and clovers? Did I miss it? Is it today? Wasn't it like yesterday or the day before? I forgot to make corned beef. Oh, well, and cabbage and dye my beer green. I usually do that. Is it today, Sarah? It's today or yesterday? It was yesterday. Oh, oh well. Oh well. Okay. I guess I missed it. I missed it. Okay. Let's read some of this. We're not going to we're not going to read the entire thing. Uh but I did highlight some, some and I'll read it on a different stream, but I just wanted to show you guys about this this case. So Knox, among other things, Knox negligently conducted or failed to conduct a differential diagnosis when diagnosing child abuse by the plaintiff parents against their plaintiff children. Plaintiffs bring this action. Now, this is a 1983 case in federal court. This is like what Sean McMillan does. He always brings these 1983 cases. MG, pay attention because I'm going to talk you into filing one of these one of these days because you're going to you're not going to be able to stop yourself after hearing about this injustice these work by the way plaintiffs bring this action pursuant to 42 usc 1983 and alaska law to hold defendants accountable for their misconduct and for violating plaintiffs constitutional rights to redress the loss caused to plaintiffs and their families by defendants outrageous and inexcusable conduct and to shine a light on these events to ensure the necessary changes are made so that no future family has to suffer the same pain and anguish plaintiffs have suffered as a result of defendant's misconduct. God, I love these lawsuits. Oh, oh, talk legally to me. I love it. That should be the name of a channel. That would be funny. Talk legally to me. I like it. I know. I need to have, I know. You need to have Tug write you a song about your theft from Larry. Now, wait a minute. He stole from me first. That was just revenge. Oh, and by the way, MG, nice work on clipping that before I could and getting the hits on it. Good for you. Good grift. I see that you're grifting off of it now, too. Damn it. Damn it, MG. That's all right. I'm, I'm just going to do it, too. And I'll clip it and put it up, too. Uh, BS, thanks for the super chat. Says, thanks for your in-depth reporting, Megan. I have a situation happening with my local city council. Another case of overreaching local government. I'm going to try my first FOIA request. Wish me luck. Okay, BS, listen to me now. For your FOIA request, make sure that you add the magic words. Do you know what the magic words are? Here they are. Write this down. This is a Freedom of Information Act request by a member of the public or media, if you're media, for non-commercial purposes. Those are the magic words for non-commercial purposes to be returned to me electronically by the statutory required time of the laws of this state. Okay, did you get that? 
You can rewind that and write it verbatim. And then you list, that's what you have to put in the front. That's the pref that's the preface, the preamble that you must put in a FOIA request, okay? So one, if you do that, they cannot kick it back to you and say you did it wrong or whatever. Okay, and then you list the things you want after there. Try to make it as precise as possible. If you're talking about dates, you know, you have to have, uh, if you want documents between one date and one, try to make it as small as possible. Be specific, very specific. Because if you're not specific, they can either deny you because it's overbroad or they'll charge you a shit ton of money for like a bunch of shit you didn't need. Okay, so don't do that. <laughs> MG, you got a whole $3 in YouTube ad revenue. I know, I know, I know. Sarah Adams, thanks for the super chat, says, words talk derby to me. <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, um, I'm only teasing, MG. You know I don't care. All right. Um, Knox repeatedly, here's the facts of the case. In 2006, the University of Wisconsin hired Dr. Barbara Knox as the medical director of the American Family Children's Hospital. Knox repeatedly made false accusations of child abuse while she was employed by the University of Wisconsin. As a result of Knox's false allegations in Wisconsin, dozens of innocent parents lost custody of their children. Oh my God. Dozens. And these are only two of the families affected, I need to find out from this, uh, my hair is being weird. I need to find out from this attorney if he's in contact with these other people. Ugh, what is happening? I've got this one curl just wants to be in my face. Stop. I had a good wash day the other day. Or, so yes, Sunday is always wash day. And it was a really good wash day. But I had this one, this curl here is like too chunky. And I keep I keep separating it, right? I keep separating it and it keeps going back together. Watch. By the time I'm done, it will have morphed back together and I can't make it stop doing that. And okay. So watch. It'll it'll like go back together. It's very strange. A good wash day, what's a bad wash day? Well, a bad wash day is when it doesn't work out so good. Uh, Flux, thank you for the five bucks on Cash App, says for we need more shame bell. Oh, yeah, let's ring the shame bell while I'm reading this. <laughs> shame. As a result of Knox's false shame. allegations shame. in Wisconsin, dozens shame. of innocent parents lost custody of their children. As a result of Knox's false allegations shame. in Wisconsin, shame. innocent people were convicted shame. of crimes and sent to prison. Doesn't it sound like someone else we know? Oh, you know who that is. Sally Smith. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, I have a rogue curl. But isn't it weird when you try to separate them and then they go back together? Like, I just have this one big sausage, like, sausage curl here that I'm trying to, like, I guess I could clip it back and then maybe it wouldn't annoy me so much. Should I just put a clip in it? There. Now it's kind of out of my face. All right. My grandmother used to say this poem to me. There once was a girl who had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead constantly. And when she was good, she was very, very good. And when she was bad, she was horrid. <laughs> I loved that poem. She used, to see, she used to recite that to me all the time. All right, let's see. The University of Wisconsin placed Knox on administrative leave in 2019. And by the way, in the same case, I believe it was that administrative leave documentation that they got sealed so that it's not it's not public. We can't we can't see it. We can't see what it was uh, that got her thrown out of the University of Wisconsin on administrative leave leave. This judge in this case decided that it should be sealed. The University of Wisconsin, uh, later in 2019, Providence negligently vetted Knox's history before hiring her as the medical director of AC. Providence failed to further investigate the reports about Knox when she worked for the University of Wisconsin. After hiring her, Providence failed to supervise Knox. Providence negligently failed to review Knox's work. That's a problem. 
Knox's position with Providence made her responsible for doing forensic assessments and diagnosing whether children had been abused. Alaskan law enforcement agencies rely on assessments and diagnoses from AC when deciding whether to file criminal complaints against parents for the heinous crime of abusing their own children. Knox's history of false allegations of abuse in Wisconsin was widely reported in the press during the same general time period when Providence hired Knox. Providence sent an email to more than 75 people, including law enforcement and Providence staff, refuting the news reports about Knox's history in Wisconsin and supporting Knox. Wow. Providence continues to stand behind and support what was said, the email. And then I don't really understand number 69 because it directly contradicts 68. And I don't know if this is a typo or what, but it says Providence does not stand behind that email. So I'm not sure which one is true. Number 70, Providence received dozens of complaints from Providence employees that Knox was falsely accusing parents of child abuse and bullying subordinate employees. All six members of the medical staff at AC either quit or had their position eliminated as a result of the issues surrounding Knox. I mean, this woman sounds like she should be added immediately to the uh, uh, to the munchy bunch, the coven, the seventh floor coven. Where are they? Here they are. Yep. She, she belongs on this wall. I'm going to be creating a new wall, by the way, because people have been asking me for all the child abuse pediatricians that we're aware of uh, who've destroyed people's lives. And I think that we do need to make a wall. So, yeah, going to be doing that soon. Um, the due process clause of the 14th amendment, you know, that amendment that the, uh, that supervisor at Orange County had no idea what it was, protects the fundamental right of parents to direct care, upbringing, and education of their children. Emily Acker had a difficult pregnancy with her daughter, IA. IA was injured during an emergency cesarean section delivery. How many of these cases are we going to hear where there was birth injury? Approximately three weeks after IA was born, in January of 2021, Knox falsely accused the Ackers of abusing IA based on injuries that had actually occurred during childbirth. Mm, 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 mm. They claim that she conducted an inappropriate, incomplete, and deeply flawed examination of IA, including through her failure to take any steps to obtain a complete and accurate patient history, which violates standard medical practice, hospital policies, and procedures, and clinical practice guides. Knox's false allegation caused the Ackers to lose custody of IA and their other child, EA, for more than 11 months. Oh, my God. I can't even. They suffered economic loss, defamation, loss of consortium. Uh, oh, no, don't tell me they got divorced. Loss of consortium normally means that they lost each other. I hope that didn't happen. Mm. Then there are other there are two other people in this, too. Jane Doe and John John Doe. Jane Doe had a difficult pregnancy with her son, John Jr. John Jr. has ongoing health issues that were caused by a difficult pregnancy. Again, birth injury. In March of 2021, same year, Knox falsely accused the Doe's of abusing John Jr. based on injuries that were actually caused by the difficult pregnancy. Defendant Knox conducted an inappropriate, incomplete, and deeply flawed examination of John Jr., including through her failure to take any steps to obtain a complete and accurate patient history. As a result of Knox's false accusations, the Doe's lost custody of both their children for more than five months. This is such a crime. As a result of Knox's false ac accusations, John Doe is charged with assault in, in the second degree, a felony. Hmm. As a result of Knox's false allegations, Jane Doe was charged with assault in the third degree, a felony. Wow. Knox entered into an agreement with Providence to avoid adverse credentialing actions by Providence because she resigned from them. She resigned in April 1 of 2022, and then she entered into an agreement with them to avoid adverse credentialing. So they agreed not to tell anyone that she had been involved in all this, this terrible shit. 
Is that is that what Providence did here? That agreement will be claimed to be confidential and neither Knox nor AC will agree to disclose it absent a court order. As a consequence of this agreement, Knox is able to freely travel the country and continue to misdiagnose child abuse, causing similar harm to other parents. Terrible. Terrible. So just so you know, so that was, I, that's where I, I left off reading. I haven't finished reading it yet. And uh, we'll read the entire thing on another stream. But I just wanted to tell you, show you guys what I have been reading. And then Knox came up without me even knowing she was connected to any of these people. And it turns out we're going to find out more about Dr. Knox tonight at 6 p.m. on Dr. Joe, 6 p.m. Eastern time on Dr. Joe Corcoran's channel because he's going to be talking to Spike Cohen about the case with the Sullivans and Barbara Knox, the same woman who's being sued by two people in Alaska. And I hope to hear from their attorney. Uh, who I did reach out to today and asked uh, to give some updates on like what's going on in that case. And also if he wants to be interviewed, I would love to talk to him about it uh, because we need to, we need to keep the spotlight on, on some of these, on these cases, these child abuse pediatricians need to be reined in. They have way too much power. And I, I feel like I'm finally being vindicated in my reporting on these people. Like it's finally coming out. Thank God. Thank God. Um, hmm. All right, let's see. Let's see what else. Okay, I think I think that's it. I think I've got it all uh, for today. I've got to go and bring my kids, uh, bring her some keys so that she can get a ride home. Uh, M169, thanks for the super chat, says, weren't computerized medical records supposed to assist doctors in knowing medical history? Looks like child abuse doctors aren't looking at the records. Or if they are, they're just determining that they know better than the people who wrote the records. I mean, that's what Sally Smith did. She thought that her assessment was more important than the specialists and held more weight than the specialists. Uh, and I think that that's a, an ongoing problem with child abuse pediatricians. They think that they know more than everybody else. And it's, a, it's maddening. All right, guys, tune in to uh, Dr. Joe Corcoran's stream tonight, 6 p.m. I will be there. Spike Cohen will be there. We're going to do more on this, on this topic. And I'm so happy Joe is jumping into this and he's going to go after some of these cases because I need the help. And uh, who better than Joe Corcoran? Uh, with medical experience, especially in a lot of these birth injuries, et cetera. And, and it, it's just great that he's doing this. I'm so excited. I'm so excited that he's uh, jumping into the fray. All right, everybody, you take care. Thank you so much for those uh, late super chats. I sure appreciate that. We're definitely beyond medium wage then today. And uh, that that's always the goal. Just, just medium wage. That's it. All right, guys. Uh, let me see if I can get, what do I, oh yeah. MeganFox.Locals.com. Don't forget to get over there. And don't forget to download Fox Den Daily on Apple Podcast and Spotify and Amazon, anywhere you listen to podcasts. Please let me know what you think of it. I really do want your feedback. Please leave a review. And be honest, you don't have to leave a five-star review. If you And if you have topics you want me to talk about, what are the cases that you're following? Who are the YouTubers that you love? Those are the things I'm covering on Fox Den Daily. And I would really appreciate it if you would post those ideas and timestamps for me on locals, meganfox.locals.com. You can follow me there for free. You can post stuff for free. Um, and you know, if you want to sign up, it's five bucks a month. Use promo code tonsil twins uh, for a two month discount when you sign up for an entire year. And we do have fun over there. We've got the live chat going. I'm reading Greg's book, uh, Iron 44. We're on chapter five. That's coming up soon too. We're going to do chapter five soon. And uh, yeah, so that's it for today. Thanks for being here. Happy Monday. <music>
storming in there with yeah. a string of garlic and some holy water. <laughs> across. Across. <laughs> yeah. May the power yeah. of Christ oh, compel no. you. No, I don't. You realized this house was infested with sucky business. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sucky you loaders. <laughs> I don't remember saying it now. So no wonder he said that. drown her before you burn <laughs> her. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, uh, your next witness. Now witness I know why you couldn't no, drown her. Laces. That is also why. That's the end of this.